Well, happy Friday, everyone. You know what that means? Another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you are gracing us with your presence, welcome, super happy to have you here. The way this works is really simple. On your screen, you will see a chat box. In that chat box, you can enter your question, concern, comment of the day, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I do not. But either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care. So guys, tonight we are coming to you as always on, um, on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. No Twitter tonight. Uh, the software, there's some kind of some kind of streaming issue. So nothing, no, if you guys are on, on, uh, on Twitter, come over to YouTube or Instagram or Facebook to be able to check us out. And I gotta tell you, I normally start out saying this was a good week. This week was tough. It was a tough week. You know, I got, if you guys don't know, like, so the contest that we have for best lawn stripes ended, or the end, when you could do submissions, ended last week. So tonight, we're going to announce the winner or winners of, uh, of, um, of the contest. Again, it was not easy. Uh, you know, really racked my brain. It was, a, it was, a, it was, it was really tough. Um, we're going to show you guys a lot of the entries. So a lot of people that sent um, entries in. We got, we got um, I would say, 23 or 24 entries, which is pretty good. It's more, more than I actually expected to get, which is awesome. So just to recognize all the folks that put a lot of hard work into their lawns, we're going to show you guys the, the entries and then finally the submissions, so or the ones that the one that won. So as far as winners, we're going to be doing two different categories because I, I was going to pick one, but I said I, I can't just do one. We're going to do best cool season lawn, best warm season lawn. That's how we're going to break it down. So there's going to be two uh, winners tonight in each of their respective categories. We may have to just divide this up, you know, um, in, in future contests and uh, and and see some other ways to get kind of creative with it. But it was it was fun. So I, th I think you guys will agree with me that the lawns that won, the two lawns that won, um, as far as the the ethos of the co of the competition is supposed to be around best lawn stripes, definitely. Uh, you know, they demonstrated that very well. So we're going to announce that later on in the show this evening. 
I'm thinking um, around the nine o'clock hour Eastern. So we're gonna we'll do take the first um, you know hour or so, take some questions, uh, work through uh, like you know work through the, our, our normal our normal thing, and then um, to give folks on the West Coast that are watching time to tune in and be able to see who uh, who won. So so let's see what we have in the live stream tonight. All right, first up we got uh, Raider Nation. He's in the house. He says crazy weather's here in North Carolina. It was 50 degrees this morning. Wasn't that cool here in Georgia? It was. Um, it was in the 80s today, the low 80s today. You know what I mean? So it's it was um, it was warm, but not uh, not not so bad that you couldn't get out there and uh, and mow. You know, so it wasn't wasn't too bad. We definitely did have 50s weather, Raider Nation. So whatever you guys have going on in uh, in North Carolina, it seems like it missed us. Uh, you know, definitely by by midday, the temperatures were you know where where you'd expect them to be this time of year um, in Georgia, which is nice. All right, next up, we got Kevin D. Jones in the house. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, first, first we got Kevin. He says, uh, T-Nex on Wednesday, foreplay, and 1600 Double Dark today. Okay, I like it. Water in tomorrow morning, and domination begins. And LOL OG Amos, where's LG? Is he lurking on another channel? So what he's talking about is Archie Amos has set it off tonight, guys. Starting off with uh, the Super Chat. Uh, thank you so much, Archie. Appreciate you. Super chat received. He says, "Come out, come out, LG. Why are you guys trying to? Why y'all? Why are you guys tempting LG? Why y'all? Why do you guys do that? It's not necessary. You guys want to awaken him. You don't want to bring him out. It's not. It's not good. All right. So, so thank you so much for the super chat, uh, Archie. It's a great way to start this, the show off. You are, of course, now the show sponsor. Your name in lights, whatever that means to you. Again, much appreciated. And his question is, evening, young man. My question is." This is a good time to verticut, and if so, how deep is sufficient? What do you recommend to be applied after verticutting? Thanks for the great information. Great. So yes, Archie, as far as um, to answer your question, is now a great time to verticut? Yes, absolutely. I did mine 13 days ago as of today. Um, Memorial Day weekend I did it. If you guys remember, I live streamed that. And uh, yeah, so yes, yeah, so now's a great time to get that done. Um, the end of May, end of June, are, are great months to to do verticutting uh, to help thin out that turf some. As far as how deep, so as far as deep, um, I don't like to get down into the tur uh, into the into the soil. So there, I got a question from another viewer today out of Texas, and they were saying, "Hey, I want to verticut my lawn this weekend. Um, I have a son, Joe. How deep should I be getting down into the, into the soil?" And I'm like, "You shouldn't. Like, I would not go down into the soil. I would I would even when I set my verticutter up." Um, the height that it's set to this past one was, I think it was like four millimeters. So I didn't have it set as aggressively as I could, but typically between two to four millimeters above the surface. So if this is the surface, the verticutter, the blades are just above, just, you know, if, I mean, if I get a little low spot, it might kiss the dirt, but it's certainly not in there cutting channels into, into the soil. Reason for that is what you're really trying to do is to, to cut those, those stolons to help encourage new growth, but you're not trying to, to be so aggressive that you're beating the turf up that it's gonna take longer to recover. You don't wanna put unnecessary unnecessary stress into it to where your verticutting starts behaving more like dethatching, right? We're not we're not trying to do that. So uh, as far as answering your question, yes, now's a good time to do it. As far as how deep, I would keep it above the surface of the um, of, of the, the ground. So two millimeters at the most aggressive, uh, two to, uh, four millimeters is where I did mine 13 days ago. And uh, yeah, and as far as, what to apply afterwards. I can tell you what I did. So um, when I did my lawn, I verticut, sorrel roll, turf raked, and then I mowed. And after I was done with that with, with that um, process, I applied uh, essential gene. So I did my granular biostimulant, and then I applied humic max. So I did my granular biostimulant, and I also did a uh, a fertilizer. So I mean, it was the end of the month, so it was the time to uh, to do that. So I can actually show you what I applied. If you go to shop and then go to Miramichi Green Biostimulants. So as far as the biostimulant, the granular, it was uh, Essential G, this guy right here. I think it was three bags in the back lawn, if I'm not mistaken. And then on the front lawn, or sorry, on the front lawn, but then as far as the fertilizer goes, we did, uh, we did Humic Max. So it was these two. So this was the fertilizer and the other was the biostimulant. And of course I, I did my, li my normal uh, liquid sprays, um, which consisted of uh, the carbon kit with 901C and Primo. So yeah, so yeah, the um, yeah that's that's what I did um, right after right after verticutting. This is why I like to do it, Archie, at the end of um, at the end of the month. 
at the end of a month before the, the next month starts is because that's when I, I do my granular app. And really, you know, if you're using any of the um, the Lebanon turf fertilizers, the ones that we carry on the golf course lawn store, those really shouldn't get hung up in um, in the canopy very much. They should get down in the soil. Um, but but just to even prevent the chance of you getting out there and verticutting and taking up some of that of the, the stuff that you that you just applied, I recommend doing all the verticutting, all the cultivation work before you do your granular for um, for that month. So so hope that helps, sir. Um, Great question. Thank you for the super chat. If you're interested in seeing how the lawn has recovered since then, so again, 13 days to the day today since the lawn had um, a pretty good thrashing, you know, good verticut, sorrel roll, turf rake, and mow. And this was this afternoon. If you guys are watching on Instagram, you guys could have seen this already, but this is the lawn as of, you know, a couple hours ago. Um, so yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's recovering nicely. The color came back uh, great. The lawn is, it's, um, striping, it's striping fairly well and the color looks good. And if you guys ever get a chance to walk on this, it's like, it's very firm. So the nice thing about verticutting and turf raking is you don't have a lot of that, that spongy feeling that you tend to get if you don't do something to thin out the turf some, so at some point during the season. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it feels like, I mean, you could bounce a tennis ball off of it. It's, it's, it's that firm. Um, yet, um, yeah, it's, it's great. You know what I mean? It cuts great, stripes great, um, and, and it's not it's not spongy. No disease problems. I haven't had, I haven't seen a single mushroom in the lawn uh, this year as yet, which is, you know, which which kind of points to the, that thatch, those thatch levels are, are lower than they've been in years past. So hope that helps, Archie. Great question. If you need anything else, uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, if you, you know, it sounds like you're, you're well on your way to a uh, to having a lot of fun in the in the lawn this weekend. Hopefully you have a mower or have some way to catch the clippings whenever you verticut. Because if you don't, it makes quite a mess. So, you know, in my case, all the debris went into a, a basket so I could just throw it out. But if in your case, if you don't have a mower or system that you can actually do that, be prepared to be to rake the entire lawn. If you're interested in seeing what that process was like, this is the video from a couple weeks ago, it was like the Saturday, um, Saturday before so Memorial Day was the 29th, 28th, 29th. Um, so it was like, it was that Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. So this is the verticutting uh, video. It was a live stream. So hope that helps. Need anything else? Let me know. All right, let's see who we got here in the Instagram tonight. We got Wade um, in the house. Uh, Matthew Lawson, Norwegian Lawn Care. What's going on, guys? Hayden Garden Services is joined. I'm um, Offroad NV, and we got um, Offroad NV saying, uh, "Hey, Ron, we love Friday Grass Talk. Yeah, I love it too, man. This, it should be fun. Although this week was more stressful. Like I said, you know, you don't want to get it wrong, and having to go through all these entries and a, a lot of the work that people put into their lawns. You know, you want to make sure that you're, you're making the right choice. But I, Overall, I think I think I did. I think I think I got it right. I think you guys will agree with me. I'm going to go through them all. There are a couple of, of honorable mentions, um, but it really came down to these uh, these two lawns. All right. Next up, we have um, Universal or Univ uh, Univ Poke um, saying woo, woo or woo. Maybe for Ric Flair, he says I took your advice, backed off the watering a little bit, and my big back beer spot amongst my uh, newly seeded perennial ryegrass is starting to grow in. I um, also kind of, I also lightly raked it and kind of massaged that area. Hey man, what, what you do with your lawn is your business. You want to massage your grass, massage your grass. But yeah, I'm glad I'm glad to hear that, uh, Unipoke. I mean, it, looking at the pictures, I know you said that area was not a low spot, but it looked like it had a lot of water to me. I'm trying to see if I can find the picture from... Um, from last week, I maybe not, maybe maybe I'm not gonna be fine. I don't think I don't think this was. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you see, I mean, that, that, had, that had quite a bit of water um, there. So yeah, backing it off, it was a good call. It's gonna it's gonna help the lawn to that area to dry a little bit and will help with, with germination. So I'm not surprised that that area is doing a bit better and it should continue to do better. You know, as um, as as time progresses, the only thing I'd say is that you're doing perennial ryegrass. I'm not I'm not sure what part of the country you're in, but here when it gets gets really hot, you know that that area could struggle a bit. So just keep you know keep an eye on that. So I know you backed off the water, but once the grass germinates and it's it's doing well, you're out there mowing it. Um, make sure you're keeping enough water on it because you don't want that that newly germinated grass to um you know to to suffer to you know a lot of your hard work to go down the drain whenever we get uh, high temperatures. You know. 
on the topic of grass seed, on the topic of growing grass from seed, our new blog post uh, that will be the pinned comment of the of the show once it's over is around that very topic. It's around grass seed because I get like, if you guys watch on the, on the show, your regulars, you know, at least once a week, um, or at least there's at least one question every week on grass, on growing grass from seed, and what are the, the pros and cons of doing that, and the challenges, which grass seeds germinate best, and which ones don't, uh, and all this stuff. So it took some time. It, it, it took some time to put this together. It's a bit longer post, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, so if you go to guides and then blog, it was published today. It is has a topic of what are the best grass seeds and how long do they take to grow? So it's an introduction to grass seeds, talks about KBG, talks about Bermuda grass, talks about perennial ryegrass, talks about St. Augustine, kind of a trick question there because St. Augustine, there really isn't a uh, grass seed for it. It's normally plugs or sod, um, but you know, I get questions about that. So there's gonna be a section in there talking about St. Augustine as well. Talks about um, the growth rates, which you can expect. Uh, this is a video that I did from a few years ago when um, when Arden 15 was still available and I overseed my lawn with Arden 15. I mean, it's just a, a it has some tips in there. I was, I was mixing the grass seed as, as that might you find you might find beneficial if you're doing that. Uh, what else? Um, another another um, video on on overseeding on on growing grass from seed, but then a lot of great content that hopefully you guys will enjoy. It talks about some products also help all grass types. Um, Primo, you know, near and dear to my heart. And then Hydrotain this time of year is a great is a great addition to any lawn care program. So if you guys are interested, you know, anyone that's trying to grow a lawn from seed. Um, and are interested in you know a relatively not as I say a short read but a fairly complete read that covers a lot of what I think is important to know. Uh, feel free to check it out. Give me your feedback if you like it. Let me know if you don't like it. Let me know that too. If things you, things I could I could add to make it better, feel free to uh, to chime in and I'll put that there in the chat uh, now so you guys will have that to watch to read or share uh, later on after the show. I know I've got it. There we go. There it is. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy uh, enjoy reading that. It was a lot of it was a lot of fun to put together, a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun as well. All right, next up we have another super chat. Let me get down here and grab it really quick for Mr. Michael Fetty. You can do that. Thank you so much, Michael. Appreciate you. Super chat received. Ooh, something's going on with the audio. That's not good. Hopefully it's coming through well for you guys. It says, "Hey Ron, um, third week in a row here. Can't recall recommended Carbon Pro G." slash L schedule. I am spoon feeding my other stuff bi-weekly and I fertilize monthly. Yeah, so it comes to Carbon Pro G monthly. So whenever you do, as far, I'll quickly go through this again. So as far as um, when I would apply Carbon Pro G or Essential G is at the beginning of the month, whenever you're doing your granular fertilizer app is when I would also do your granular biostimulant. So this, the order, the sequence would be granular biostimulant, Essential G or Carbon Pro G, your granular fertilizer, then spray your liquids, whatever you're, whatever you're using for spoon feeding. So in my case, it would be the Carbon Kit, it'll be Primo, um, and then a micronutrient, and then I let the lawn sit. And then the following morning, I will run irrigation to water the, the fertilizer, the granular fertilizer in, because the liquids need to dry on, on the grass. So I don't run irrigation right after that. So the following day, I'll run, I'll run irrigation. And if you know Mother Nature's being especially generous, I'll, I'll you know get rain the following day. And I don't have to run irrigation. But that's the sequence, uh, Michael. Once per month is, um, is is typically as often as I do it. And again, right before I do my fertilization at the beginning of the month. So hope that helps, sir. Thank you for the super chat. Really do appreciate all the love and support. If you need anything else, uh, let me know. As far as Carbon Pro L, I don't use that product anymore. But if you if you substitute Carbon Pro L for the Carbon Kit, it would be the same thing. You would spray it. You would that's what you would mix with like your growth regulator or anything else you happen to be spraying at the beginning of the month and spray it after your your granulars after your fertilizer. So hope that helps, sir. All right. Next up, we have let me see. Uh, Madam Madam is in the house. Madam Reeds, thank you so much for coming to say hi. I appreciate you. As always, we got Robert Rady saying, evening all. What's going on, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well. Thanks for coming to uh, to hang out in the live stream. And then uh, next up, we have Mr. Carlos Picard saying, evening. What's going on, Carlos? Hopefully you're doing, hopefully you're doing okay. Hopefully you're doing just fine. And then we have a question over here on the Instagram. All right, from Yankees Dolphins it says, uh, should you not walk on fresh laid sod? I put down 10 rolls where we removed a tree and it looks like I need to walk on it to flatten it out some. Yeah, so what I would say is this, is um, 
if you if you want to, some people will roll the sod after they um, after it's installed to help um, to help smooth it out, to have it to have it settle, improve that that uh, that sod to soil contact. What you would not want to do is on fresh sod get out there and be like playing football on it or kicking a soccer ball on it, like you know things that that are that are gonna are gonna introduce um, like wear and tear to it until it's established. So I wouldn't say you you can't walk on it, but I mean I would not um, like if you're, if you're going out there to go roll it in or help you know help to do some work to help the the sod establish that I wouldn't have an issue with. But I, but you wouldn't want to have people out there you know again playing football or, or rolling around on it or or doing anything that um that is gonna it's gonna could cause the sod to shift when it's trying to root in. So yeah, it shouldn't be a problem with that. Um, Yankees Dolphins. I uh, hope that. That answers your question. Make sure you're also watering it um, adequately, not too much, but adequately. Make sure you're putting enough water on it. And uh, and yeah, yeah, that's um that's uh, that's that is what I would say as far as um as far as new sod. You, not saying you have to stay off it completely, but I would not um, play around on it until it is established. You spend a lot of money on it. You don't want to you don't want to have like kicking the, the the newly put um, play sod all over the place. All right, next up we have uh, Matt Jackson. Matt Jackson's in the house. He says, "How do you apply quinclorac?" Um, you would you, you would apply it using a a pump sprayer. I, I, I mean, I say I, I say a backpack sprayer, but really any any um, pressurized sprayer. So if you have like a, a pump sprayer, a handheld sprayer, like a little two gallon sprayer, you can use that. If you have a backpack sprayer, you can use that as well. Um, depending on what you're trying to target, uh, whether you would mix um, like a uh, surfactant, like a non ionic surfactant with it, or something, or go a little bit more aggressive with a methylated seed oil. Uh, but yeah, just just read the label for um, for suggested rates based on what you're trying to target, and it, you'd apply it the same way or the the same technique that you would use for say like applying Celsius or Certainty, like um, any foliar based um, um, herbicide uh, spray would be it'd be similar for quinclorac. Now how you mix it is going to be um, you know, again the rates are going to be different. Um, any adjuvants that you use with it um, will be different depending on whether you want to go with a, a non anionic surfactant or an MSO if you're trying to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, but yeah, I mean the, the label is your friend. What I'll tell you, Matt, is um, I will give you a link to Quinclorac uh, DF here. I'll, uh, I'll I'll send you a link to that and just look, just read the label, um, read the label and just follow it, follow that for the for the correct rates. But yeah, the, the short answer is a sprayer of some sort. You would not apply it using, let me see this, at Matt Jackson, you would not uh, um, apply it using any kind of, um, like you wouldn't use it with a, you wouldn't use a hose-end sprayer, I guess, if that's what you're asking. So no hose-end sprayers, you want to use a, um, a, proper, a proper pressurized uh, sprayer, whether it be a, like a two-gallon pump sprayer or a backpack sprayer. And uh, guys, I think Matt um, also sent in, so Matt also did a, a recent renovation project. I think it was five pallets of uh, zoysia side. We've been emailing back and forth. And he, um, you know, he did some, uh, he's, he's, he was did a full renovation in the back lawn, uh, an area that has, you know, quite a bit of shade, some trees, and he's trying to make the, the back lawn nice for his kids to play. So he sent me a little short video and I'm gonna see if I can play it. We'll see if we can make this happen. We'll see if the technology cooperates. Hopefully the audio isn't garbage. So if it is, I apologize ahead of time. And uh, let's see, and let's all hope like YouTube doesn't play a bunch of ads. We'll see, we'll try it, right? All right, so this is Matt talking about his zoysia lawn. Let's see here. Jackson here, I had uh, four, it ended up being five pallets. Hey Ron, Matt Jackson here. I had uh, four, it ended up being five pallets of Xeon zoysia installed in my backyard here. Let's flip you around. This was all originally St. Augustine, and I had a vegetable garden over there. It's been about three months now or so. Um, thanks for your suggestion on the quinclorac. I'm going to be um, spraying it back here where I have a lot of the, um, you can see the St. Augustine is trying to come back. But I've been mowing it at a one inch height of cut with my rotary mower. But so far it's been pretty good. We've been getting rain here in, in Austin, Texas. So I've been happy with it. The kids have like almost a real soccer field back here now. Nice. Um, originally. The four pallets stopped right here, and I had to get another pallet to come up this way and fill in all the way over here. All the way to right there. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, just wanted to say thanks for uh, everything you do on your YouTube channel, and all the great advice you give people that don't know exactly what they're doing, but they want to try. And everybody have a great day, and thanks.
You are very, very welcome, uh, Matt. Thanks. Hopefully that worked for you guys. Um, I'm not listening to the stream live, so hopefully you guys can let me know if the audio came across. I, I, I didn't get a chance to test it before the show started, but I think I did. I connected all the plumbing uh, properly to be able to make that happen. So yeah, so Matt, um, yeah, as far as Quinn Clorac, what you're showing is is um, he had a St. Augustine lawn before, did a renovation, and is switching to Zoysia, and Quinn Clorac is a good option for... Um, for removing St. Augustine in a, in a zoysia lawn. So just, you know, pay attention to the rates um, that talks about what you'd want to use when spraying Conchloric against on, on zoysia. It looks pretty good, man, I gotta tell you. Like, uh, you know, that's what's one of the benefits of zoysia. Like, I'm, I'm, it's doing fairly well given all that shade. Like, I can tell you, Bermuda grass would not do well in with that much shade at all. So keep monitoring it. Keep me posted as far as how it does with, um, you know, as it establishes more, because it looks like it's coming in pretty good. You know, overall, it, it looks like it's doing, it's doing, again, like I said, much better than Bermuda would do in that, in that area. You would not be happy if you went with Bermuda side instead of Zoysia. So awesome. Hope that helps as far as um, the link I just sent you as far as Quinclorac and um, how to apply it. Um, you know, follow the label and you should get a good result. So again, thank you for the kind words and sending in the short video right before the, uh, the show. All right, so we have another super chat here. Let me go down and grab this real quick before we move on from Mr. Ted Rogers. Ted is like, you know what? Nope, sorry, Archie, you can't have it. Super chat received. He says, I put the tricure down, um, tricure down with my with my new Earthway and watered in. Crazy how much I've learned from your videos in two months. My yard looks completely different. Sprinklers to be installed next month, and the front lawn Reno in the fall. It's only up from here. Yeah, man. It's funny. Thing is, Ted, it's um once you start paying attention to it, right? Once you start paying attention to your lawn, it's really difficult if you if you're paying attention, you have um, you know good information, and you you understand what to do. Like you know, you get a soil test, you feed your lawn based on the soil test results, you control the weeds in your lawn, and then you just mow it a whole lot. If you do those things and you do them consistently, it's really hard to not have a good lawn. Like it's 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 you know it's, it's if you're doing those things, it's tough to not have a good looking stand of grass. So I'm glad that just in two months you're seeing a lot of benefit, a lot of um, improvement in the lawn. Really makes me happy. Like comments like this is what are, are what I live for. So thank you um, for for keeping me posted and let me know that your lawn is uh, is doing well. And for the for the super chat, I think you're ahead of um, Archie. So now there you go. You are now the show sponsor, sir. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Again, thank you again for all the love and support. All right. So um, Yankees Dolphin says thanks, Ron. I always appreciate it. Watering right now. Yeah, nice. I mean, again, don't go too crazy with the watering. Like it shouldn't turn into a swamp. But at the same time, you don't want to, you know, you just spend a lot of money on the sod. You don't want it to be drying out, right? So, like, you know, the adequate but not um, not enough to where you're going to end up damaging the lawn because or damaging the sod, causing disease problems, this kind of thing, or creating conditions for disease problems because you put so much water on it. So make sure you, uh, you know, you water, but not too much. Enough, but not too much. So how, how's that for, a, for, a, for an answer? <laughs> All right, next up we have... Um, Robert Rainey, he says, dang, Archie isn't messing around tonight. Hashtag show sponsor. We got Jackie Bear up next saying, have an excellent stream, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Jackie. I really do appreciate it. And uh, next up is Carlos Picard saying, the intro is about to make me go make me go mow my jam right now. That's what it's about, man. It's supposed to get you inspired to get out there and mow. I mean, a lot of times there's, there's someone that's either listening to the show and they're out there doing something in their lawn, which I completely support. Like if, I, if you had a choice between sitting down in front of your computer and watching the live stream or listening to the live stream while you're in your lawn mowing, I'm gonna get to tell you get out there and mow. I'm never gonna tell you to not mow your lawn. Never gonna tell you to not mow your lawn. All right, next up is Mr. Maurice Ashley saying, good evening. What's going on, Maurice? Hopefully you're doing well. Thank you for coming to hang out in the live stream. And then next up we got uh, William, not Will I am, but William. He says, I am aerating tomorrow and leveling with sand next week. What should I put down before leveling? Thanks for any advice you can uh, can offer. Uh, yeah, yeah, Will. So as far as um, the process that I like to do is I like to do an aeration, like what, which is exactly what you're doing in, in your top dressing, um, and then to do a granular biostimulant and fertilizer, like a granular fertilizer. Because if you think about it, a granular biostimulant needs to get in the soil to work, Fertilizer also, or granular fertilizer anyway, needs to get in the soil to also work so that after you're done aerating, you've got the entire lawn opened up. You got all these voids in the in the in the lawn, which makes it really easy to fast track uh, those those, that, those biostimulants and the nutrients from the fertilizer into the soil. So it makes sense to me that you would aerate and then you would 
apply your granular biostimulants, your granular fertilizer, and then you would top dress on top of that. So aerate, granular product applications, and then top dressing uh, after you are done. As far as what I would recommend, as far as stimul biostimulants go, I'll show you real quick, William. So if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, if you go here and you go to shop and then go to biostimulants, you will see um, Essential G. This is what I would recommend as far as what to apply um, right after aeration, but prior to top dressing. So this you can apply and you can go heavy because again, you're trying to, it sounds like you're going with just sand. He didn't say a sand compost blend, just sand. So as far as a way to introduce organic material that's relatively easy to apply, that goes down with your broadcast spreader, it's gonna you know, help you get the most out of, um, out of the fact that you know, you've know you gone and done, done a great job aerating the lawn. You're really trying to also increase that, that, that um, organic material in the process prior to applying, putting that sand down. Essential G, uh, Essential G is a great way that is easy to do. That's a lot of, that, that checks that that box as far as um, in, increasing the amount of organic material. When it comes to fertilizer, I would go with Humic Max. This is what I have used for you know countless after countless top dressings, like uh, the big one that's in, the, in that video that is linked in the blog um, for this week. The one on um, the other level lawn leveling or, or, or fixing of bumpy lawn areas videos that I've done, like Humic Max has always been has been the one that I've um, I've, I've shown because it's a great product. I mean, it's a it's an excellent excellent fertilizer. I can't I can't stress how um, enough how uh, how good a fertilizer it is and how much how much I like it and how much people um, that use it really enjoy it. Like if you look on the store, I want to say as far as like um, customer reviews. Uh, the um, Essential G, I think, has the most reviews. And then second is Humic Max. So those two are like very well-received products. I mean, the other products are excellent too, but as far as products that people just, just rave about and really like, uh, you really can't go with those two, Essential G and, and Humic Max. And you can get them, I'll send you a link. You can get them both um, here on the Golf Course Lawn Store. So hope that helps, William. Need anything else? Don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. Sounds like a fun project, man. One thing I also tell you, like I tell everybody else, anytime they say they're gonna do an aeration and lawn leveling project, take pictures before. If you can, take them also during. When you're during, when you're during the, might be kind of hard because once you're in there and you're doing the work, you're trying to get it all, get it all done, you really don't want to stop to pick up a camera and, 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 uh, and either film it or take videos of it. Um, but, um, but yeah, if you can do that before, during, and after, uh, that would be good because your lawn's never gonna look the same way again once you're done. So you may as well take, you know, have a memory of like where, how far it's come. You know what I mean? So that is what I recommend. Hope that helps, sir. Have fun um, out there doing battle with the lawn. I think, and the neighbor down the street, um, it's not technically a neighbor, but uh, a guy down the street at the corner is, I saw him this afternoon when I was pulling in, he's out there aerating as well too. And he also had the big yellow bag of super sod mix. So, you know, I may have to walk out there at some point tomorrow or whenever he's doing it, just kind of just watch and say, hey man, looking really good. I mean, he's doing it right. He, I saw him out there aerating and he's got the uh, the level mix from super sod. So, you know, two two check boxes done. All is left now is just to spread it and uh, and wait. Which is uh, which is good times, right? Good times. All right, we have another super chat. Oh lord, this is starting to get. It's starting already. Another super chat. This one from Ernest. Ernest, I don't think I've ever seen a super chat from you before, or I've not seen you. So I hopefully, um, if so, this is your first time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Super chat received. All right. Uh, he just says, sorry, Ted. So this was not about asking a question. It was not like, to contribute to the show. It was just strictly to start a super chat war, which is, you know, that's fine. You know, if I, I, I can't, I'm not gonna argue with you guys if you guys wanna do that. Um, I appreciate all the love and support. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to drop them in and I'll, I'll visit them. And uh, you guys are keeping LG away, you know? So we'll, we'll see, you know, I'm sure he's out here lurking. He's probably about to go super saiyan on you guys. So keep, you know, keep, keep, uh, keep it up. Again, thanks again uh, for the uh, super chat, Ernest. If there's anything I can help with, definitely don't hesitate to reach out. All right, we got, um, let's see where I left off. Always the hardest part is uh, Michael Fetty. He says, all right, it's Friday night and here we go. Yep, we are we are going guys. And if you guys are enjoying it, I realize we are new or we just, we just got going and we're only 30 minutes into the live stream, but there's 130 people in here so far. And if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button ever so gently, it doesn't cost anything. It's a free way to support the channel. You know, and, and I'd really appreciate it. it. Sends good vibes to YouTube and says, "Hey, you know, there's a bunch of lawn care crazies over there watching. Um, you know, this show about about lawn care, chopping it up. So if you guys would, would would not mind doing that, I would really, really appreciate it. Again, costs you absolutely nothing. It's free to do. How many things can you do in life that costs you absolutely nothing that can help somebody else, right? 
All right, so hit that like button. All right, so we have another uh, comment here from Instagram. This one is from the Phantom740. He says, what's up, Ron? Happy Friday. I just got a few yards of sand to top dress my green. I already top dressed it five days ago and it's looking nice and rolling a little bit better. Nice, I would hope so. I mean, you're out there doing, you're out there, you know, you, you already top dressed it, you, and you, um, so you did it top dress, you top dressed it a few, just five days ago and you're going back again with more sand? Man, so it's, t what you're telling me, Phantom, is that you went light, which is, which is good, right? It's gonna allow it to recover faster. And uh, I'm not surprised that it's rolling, that the ball's rolling better given that you are, um, you know, you're top dressing it. You're, you're thinning out that, um, you know, you're diluting that thatch um, at the top. And um, so yeah, so I can't, not, not surprised that the, the green is behaving better. We got also Alex in the house, the Alex Lee in the house. What's going on, Alex? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Hey man, whenever this weekend we got to get together, I got some, um, a couple of new bourbons that we got to try out. So whenever you get, whatever, if you can tear yourself away, you got to come by and maybe, Maybe tomorrow we can we can hang out. We can um, we can do a taste a taste test. Uh, Wise one nineties up here says the three week drought finally got some rain today here in Little Rock. I'm glad that the drought is finally over. That you got some rain, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, if, I, if you uh, you know if you guys have any other comments, let me know. All right, so Ted is not to be outdone. So Ted says, um, Ernest, nope, not so fast. Um, I am going to. Uh, he wants he wants his name in lights. So thank you so much. Super chat. <laughs> like it's just like with the shots fired emoji, uh, Ted Rogers. So Ted, that puts you at what uh, one fifty one. So you guys got to keep track. I, I can't. I, I you, it was it was recently done, so I know how much it is. So um, you guys got to keep track between yourselves, like as far as who is supposed to be um, supposed to be uh, that guy. So Ted, you are back. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Thank you so much for the super chat. And, uh, and guys, make sure you guys stay tuned because it's going to be a fun show tonight. We're going to, you guys are going to get to see some really good lawns. We're going to, you're going to see some lawns, um, all the entries that came in, some lawns that are in progress. Some people, some folks wanted to send in and submit their lawns anyway, even though they're like, you know what, my lawn's not looking the best, but I still want, you know, I still want you guys, I want you to show you my progress and I want to share that with you guys. So even though we're going to show the winners at the very end, I also want to recognize all the hard work that folks have put into their lawns because it's a lot of work, man. You know, this is, this, the lawn game isn't easy. You know, people think, you know, you know, you hear the UFC get fighters talk about, you know, the fight game is not easy. Man, the long game also is not easy. It's not for everybody. You know what I mean? So for those of you guys that put the work in, trying to get the best possible lawn, you know, among, you know, this band of, of, uh, of folks that really enjoy working on lawns, it's, um, we want to we definitely recognize that. So, all right. So next up, we got Gobind Prakash. He says, do you have any recommendations for Verticutter other than Allet? I don't, I don't, here's the thing, I don't know of any other um, verticutters for um, for residential lawns out, I mean, you can get, here's the thing, you can take it like a, like a slit seeder and you can use that to verticut if you set it up properly. But I'm, I'm aware of the outlets. Um, you also have the, um, like if you have like a Toro, like a ride-on Toro, you can get like the, the verticutting heads for that, but that's way more expensive than buying like a, um, a Sterling. Um, but yes, yeah, so outside of that, you also have you also the Sun Joe. There's also the Sun Joe. There's people that use the Sun Joes for verticutting as well. So uh, so yeah, that can also be used as well. Just make sure you set them set them up properly. I mean, by default, they they're gonna get down into the soil, which I'm, I'm not really a fan of doing. You want when you're done verticutting the lawn, it should look. I mean, you, you should see the lines that you should see the lines in the turf. The lawn should look a little bit thinner, but it shouldn't look like it looks after being dethatched. It shouldn't look at you. It shouldn't be looking at you like what? Like what I do? Why? Why? Why are you doing me like this, man? It shouldn't be looking at you like that. The lawn should be like, oh, that was you know, it's a little little more a little rough combing that you gave me there, but I, I think I'm gonna be better for it. That's how the lawn should look at you after you're done. So you want to you want to whatever you use, make sure you set it up to where you're not carving like channels into the soil. You're not again that. If you start doing that, it's more like dethatching versus verticutting. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that you are um, that you're setting the equipment up properly. Um, but that, but outside of the um, outside of a verticutter that will outside of a verticutter that will catch the clippings as part of it, I don't have any recommendations other than Allet um, because the other ones throw the debris into the lawn and you still got to go rake them up. All right, so we got a super chat or a couple of super chats. So we got Ernest. Let me think. Ernest is throwing up. I says one for one hundred two. So thanks, Ernest. I appreciate that. Um, so I think you are ahead. Let me think about this. Let me. I, I'm gonna. You guys got to keep track of this because I know Ernest did. 
he did two. So he's at 10, um, 102, is what I guess is where I'm at. And then Ted, um, and then I guess Ted has done a couple of super chats. I don't, so Ted, where are you? Yeah. So, oh, that's right. So you're at a tie. You're at a tie now. Okay. I got it. So Ted is saying, <laughs> super chat received. Uh, I'm good with a tie with Ernest, which I, th I think that is correct. If it's not right, you guys just let me know and I'll fix it. But I think that is right. So we'll say um, Ernest and Ted Rogers. We'll just do it in alphabetical order. So there's no, um, no, uh, you know, that, that's the whole reasoning behind it. So I think, I think that's correct. So they're your show sponsors, um, Ernest and Ted Rogers. All right, so we're good? I think so. If not, let me know. And um, yeah, and if, if not, you guys correct me and I'll, I'll fix it. All right, so we got another super chat, one from Catherine Turner. Catherine is also a, I believe, a channel um, member, or I'm not sure she's a channel member. This is her, her very first Super Chat. Thank you so much, um, uh, Catherine. Super Chat received. She says, Ron, I've enjoyed following your channel for the last few weeks. What's your background? Where do you get all your infinite wisdom that you share? First of all, my, my, my wisdom is far, far from infinite, far from infinite. Um, and a lot of it is just, um, is I have some really good friends that work in the turfgrass industry that took me under their wing, that shared a lot of what they know. Like I have friends that, that have forgotten more about turfgrass than, um, than, than, than I know at this point, right? So as far as knowledge, I know, I know quite a bit about warm season turf, about like Bermuda grass and, and as how to make it look, I think, pretty good. Um, cool season grass, I'm still learning a lot. Um, but, uh, but yeah, as, as far as, it's just mainly been, um, um, mentorship from folks that work professionally in the industry over the course of the last eight or nine years or so. And then also just ex running, doing experiments myself, right? I have a lawn and thankfully I have Bermuda. So if you, if you have a, a, an oopsie, it typically recovers from it, um, without, without too much, uh, too much fanfare. So just over the, over the years, I've refined the program that I've been using on my lawn. A couple of years ago, I started the Golf Course Lawn Academy and started teaching um, the little bit that I know to others. And the nice thing is that it, it's it's shown that what I do, the process that I do, um, is not is not only is not a sample of one. Right? There's other people that can that can take that and can create as good or better results. And even I get on my lawn um, on there. So it's just been a, it's been a time thing, like anything else, Catherine. Uh, you know, if you if you care about something and you put time into it. Uh, a lot of your free time into it, trying to get better, and you you consistently like scrutinize your work and say, you know, what how could how could this have been better? What I do good here? What I not do good here? If you do that, you know, over a period of time, it's hard to not to not improve, right? So that's um that's a lot of it. My background, um, what I do professionally is I'm a, I'm a I'm a computer guy. So I I um I work in the information security field. I've done that professionally since nine for since ninety six. 96. So what is that coming up on 30 years, which is crazy. It's crazy when you say it. Time flies, right? Um, but yeah, but as far as like turf grass around uh, nine years or so. Um, and again, a lot of that's been fast tracked because I have a lot of I have some really good friends that are very smart in this space that share a lot of their knowledge uh, with me. So uh, so yeah, thanks. I'm glad you're getting a lot of value out of the content. If you need anything else, let me know. And thank you so much for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for all the love and support. All right, scrolling back up to find out where we left off. Let us see here. Let us see. All right, um, next up is um, Michael Fetty. He says, um, anyone remember what he said about mixing Carbon Pro G and Carbon Pro L? Is it rotate or do together? So together. So even though, the thing, Michael, is even though, and this is how I actually got introduced to Miramichi Greens. It's actually a fun story. So even though they both those products have Carbon Pro in the name, they are completely different. Like they're actually made by different people. So Carbon Pro G is made by Miramichi Green for Site One, which is why you find it at Site One. Carbon Pro L, I don't know actually know who makes it, but it's not Miramichi Green. So it turns out whenever I, whenever like many moons ago when I did that video on Carbon Pro L, um, I was saying yeah, you know it's a really cool product and you know it's. Um, you know, it's neat that Miramichi Green also makes liquids as well, that in addition to the granular, and someone from Miramichi Green reached out to me and says, hey, 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 it's a, it's a decent product, but we don't make that. We don't make that. So it was it was actually someone in the comment section from them that reached out to me, and that um, that started, you know, I was started chatting with them back and forth, and that started began the relationship, and as they say, the rest is history. All that from one comment, you know what I mean? 
all that from one comment. So uh, so yeah, but as far as mix, mixing them, um, Carbon Pro G, again, once per month, at the beginning of the month is when I do that. Carbon Pro L, you can do that bi-monthly. So you can spray it at the first on the first of the month and also on the 15th of the month, and you can mix it with whatever else that you happen to be spraying. So if you're spraying growth regulator like Primo Max, you can mix this along with it. You can mix liquid fertilizers that you're using. Um, if there's any other biosimilars that you're doing as well, you can, you can do all that together and spray it uh, twice per month. So hope that helps, uh, Michael. If you need anything else, let me know. All right, uh, let's see. Um, we have a question here on Instagram from De Stepper. It says, is it okay to level if POA is still present and how many times a season should I use Carbon Pro G? Can you level if POA is still present? Yes, because um, I'm not sure what kind of grass you have, De Stepper, but it's, it's, POA really shouldn't be around too much longer here. It's a cool season. We, call, we consider it a weed, but it's a cool season grass. So... You know, with the, as the temps start getting hotter here in here in the month of June and definitely in the July, it's going to be dying off. It's, it should already be starting to die off already. Um, so yes, if you want to level, despite there being poa in your lawn, you can. Uh, as far as how often can you use um, a granular biostimulant, I do it monthly. So the beginning of every month is when I like to do that. So if you if your budget permits you to do it more often than that, by all means, go for it. But monthly is uh, is pretty good, and I do it. The, the rule the rule is pretty much you can apply it as long as the ground isn't frozen. So if you live somewhere in the southeast where the ground tends to not freeze, you could apply it literally every month if you wanted to, at the beginning of every month. So yeah, just step or yeah. So you have Bermuda, yeah, you're good to go. So it should be dying off here. The poet should be dying off um, you know, fairly aggressively in here now that we're getting um consistently hotter temperatures. So hope that helps. Great question. Need anything else? Let me know. Okay, next we have Papa Mo's Low is in the house. He says, happy Friday, Ron and everyone. Happy Friday, Papa Mo's Low. Hey guys, on the topic of um, on topic of Papa or fathers, Father's Day is around the corner. So for any of you ladies that are watching or you know, kids, cousins, friends, if you're trying to get, so, you're thinking about something you can do, get for your, um, for your, for that special guy in your life who is seriously into his lawn and you're like, you know what? I go to the golf course lawn store. They got carbon, they got fertilizer, they got, you know, sprayers. I have no idea what he, he needs. You know what? You don't have to figure it out. You, all you can do is we also have, I'll show you here really quick. We also have gift cards. So in addition to the launch in the lawn training section, if you go to shop lawn training and gift cards, we have gift cards available. So you can pick one of those up, get that, get that to your, give that to your loved one so they can go buy whatever they want. You know what I mean? There's, that's, that's the easiest gift to give. You don't have to worry about messing it up. They can go buy whatever they want. So the link to that is here on the store. Papa Mo's Low, I saw your name and I had that as one of my talking points. And since you were here, it kind of, you know, prompted me to, um, to, uh, to, um, to, to say that, to not, not to forget to say that. So if you are looking to give a gift to that special guy in your life on Father's Day, um, we have gift cards in the Golf Course Lawn Store, so feel free to take advantage. Hopefully you're doing well, Papa Mo's Low, and uh, hope the lawn's doing well too, man. All right, next up we got Keith Madison. It says, tough week, Ron. Uh, yeah, yeah, tough week. What What's going on with you? I mean, my week was a little bit tough in the sense that I had to pick a, pick a winner or winners out of this bunch. You know what I mean? They didn't make it easy for me. They didn't make it easy for me. And um, uh, December says, yeah, I live in McDonough on the same street as a Site 1. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, you got you got a Site 1 right next to you. Makes sense to get Carbon Pro G. You're not paying for shipping, and it's convenient for you to grab it. So I completely get it. All right, next up is Higgy Pop. Um, actually, no, I'm not wrong. Next up is Randall Lard. He says, hey, Ron and everyone, lawn is getting better every day. Let's have a great show. Yeah, man, let's do it, Randall. And I'm not surprised the lawn is doing better. Now that we have consistently hot temperatures, Mother Nature's not playing games with us where it goes hot one day, cold one day, and all this kind of all this kind of nonsense is consistently warm or hot enough for Bermuda to do well. Um, you know, the lawns should be should, should be doing um you got bare spots that should be filling in, and the lawns should start growing more aggressively. I have noticed um an increase in clippings, even though my lawn's under regulation. I mean, it's still not a ton, but between um, in the last two weeks, I guess is what I'm trying to say, in the last two weeks, there's been noticeably more clippings coming off the lawn between mowings um, versus the two weeks prior to that. So yeah, we the Bermuda is definitely coming into into its own. You know, the warm season grasses are really going to start taking off here um, now that the temps are where they like them, where they like them, right? All right, next up is Higgy Pop. He says. Happy weekend here in Cumming, Georgia. Still not having consistent hot weather. How are you not having consistent hot weather, um, uh, Higgy? Like, Cumming is like literally, I don't know, 
30 minutes from me. So I mean, it's been fairly hot here. So I, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of consistency are you looking for? Like how consistent do you want it? He says, lawn is still in slow, uh, slow in growth. Any suggestions other than wait for hot temperatures to arrive? Just wait, Higgy is what I would say. Um, I mean, my lawn is starting to pick up. I know Alex's lawn is starting to pick up. All the lawns around here are beginning to grow a bit more aggressively. Like I, I noticed in the past two weeks, a, a definite increase in the amount of clippings that are coming off the lawn between mowing. So time, just give it more time. It should, it should start picking up here, um, here soon. Shouldn't be very much long. Should be very much longer before you start seeing a noticeable um, increase in growth, and then by extension, um, the amount of um, the the amount of clippings and the frequency you have to mow, like how much you have to pick up your mowing as well. All right, uh, let us see here. I'm seeing if there's any email that came in or any uh, anything I got to look at. Nope, nothing right now. All right, so moving on, we have Harrison Rodriguez. He says, hey, Ron, what's going on, Harrison? Hopefully you're doing well. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. And then we, next up, we got Austin, Austin um, Ostriker. He says, hey, Ron, what do you do with the liquid left in your backpack sprayer that doesn't spray out? We're just wondering what you do. Thanks. So on my sprayer, there's very there's like dregs. There's very, very little that doesn't come out of there. Um, a good example, whenever I'm spraying like um, like uh, the, the, the carbon kit and Primo, right? If I've got extra liquids left, I'll hit the shrubs with it. I'll go and I'll spray the shrubs um, all around the house and that's normally enough to, um, to finish up. I normally don't have that much left. Um, but between, but if I do, I will, um, I'll spray, I'll spray shrubs and that, that pretty much empties out the sprayer and then I just rinse it out. And I have an area that's right next to the house, a mulch bed where there's not really any plants and that's where I rinse my, my sprayer out. I guess, again, what comes out is like a, a, a very, very small amount, just what, whatever the pickup can't get is what I, um, is what I rinse out in that area that's right next to the house, um, in a, in a, uh, in a mulch bed. But I don't, I, I tend to mix what I'm going to use. I don't, uh, I don't have, um, I don't leave the sprayer with product in it, and um, you know, if the, and if there's extra, um, I tend to use it on um, on on shrubs. So, a good example. Let's say if I'm spraying like a herbicide, right? Like say, um, like I'm spraying the uh, the Celsius Certainty kit. If I've got a little bit of extra left over, I will go and I'll spray in my mulch beds because I don't really, I don't have any plants in there really. I mean, you can still spray it. Um, just you just want to get, you just don't want to get it on like roses or those types of uh, plants. You might injure them. But but any extra, of, say, of herbicide that I have left, I'll use that in the mulch beds. So if there's any weeds that are in there, I'll go and I'll spot spray those and I'll, I'll you know I'll knock those out. So I use up whatever's in the sprayer prior to rinsing it out. All right. Next up is Keith Madison. He says, uh, drove to the store, only to be bummed. Anywho, orders uh, to order soil test done and shipped to my old soil test. Yeah, sorry about that, Keith. Yeah, so as far as, the thing is here locally, there's only a cup, like pretty much because it's an online store, um, the, the the products are in warehouses, um, some here in Georgia, some in, in, in other states for logistics. So it's not like you're gonna be able to walk in the store and pick up, um, to pick up a bag of fertilizer. Not at this stage anyway, maybe at some point, um, at something, you know, as things grow, we can look at, at doing an actual storefront. Um, we'll see, but at this point, it's largely online because um, it's, it's e-commerce, right? So we're, we're trying to serve, serve the entire country. So I've served the entire great nation of ours. That's the, uh, that's the goal. All right, next up we have no name in the house. He says, um, hey, Ron and fellow lawn enthusiasts. Looking forward to some great uh, lawn talk. Let's get those likes up. Definitely, let's get them up. We only got 76 likes, 127 people in the live stream. Surely, surely we could do better. Surely we can do better than that. Definitely get those um, those likes up if you guys are enjoying the show. If you're not enjoying the show, still get those likes up. I know, every, every like helps. All right, next up we got Oliver Rhythm. He says, which tip should be used when applying hydrotain? You're gonna wanna use a fall, I'm not a fall, a, um, a flood jet tip. So I actually happen to have one here because I was, I was taking some pictures to send to a viewer. So this is the spray tip that I would use when applying hydrotain, like a larger droplet. So you can see this is the attachment that goes in the end of like a yard battery sprayer or a flow zone. Um, and this is, let me get this away. I mean, this is dry, but I don't think I'm going to my cup. This is the spray tip. You can see it's got the, the notch there. So this puts out a larger droplet. This is what you would want to use for, for hydrotain, for pre-emergent, for fungicide, for insecticide. Anything that is soil-based um, would benefit from using a spray tip like, like this. So 
Hope that helps, Oliver. And if your next question is, well, that's really cool, Ron. Where do I get one? I am going to link one to you in the chat, assuming you don't already have it. If you already got one, then sorry. But if you don't have one and anyone else wants to know where you can get one, you can pick one up right there. Floodjet. Floodjet would be the answer. And remember, if you're spraying liquid hydrotane, um, um, Oliver, the sequence would be, ideally what I would say is this, uh, if you can do it early in the morning when there's dew on the lawn, so the, the turf is already wet, that would be good. So you would, um, the lawn's already wet, spray hydrotain, and then immediately after you're done, when I say immediately, not like, you know, three, four, five hours later, like once you are done spraying, run it an irrigation cycle to wash it um, down into, into the soil. Because it needs to get in the soil to work, and the, the larger droplet from a fledget tip helps, helps with that, right? So hope that helps, sir. Keep me posted as, how, as far as how things go. All right, Garrett uh, Lambright says, hey, Ron, watching from my dad's, um, Patrick from Texas. Hope you're having a great time, uh, great uh, night. Thank you so much, uh, Garrett. I appreciate you um, hanging out in the live stream and coming to watch the show as well. I think your dad was one of the entrants, one of the people that, that submitted as well for the competition. So we'll get to see his lawn tonight. I'm going to show... I'm going to pretty much show um, a, sh a short snippet of every lawn. I'm not going to show all the pictures because some of you guys sent me like four or five, six pictures. Some people sent video. You know, it's, it, you know, I said pictures, but some people were like, no, he's got to see video just to, to appreciate the awesomeness of my lawn. This cannot be captured in a still. It must be video. So there's like two or three videos that folks sent. So you guys get to see those as well, too. So, so yeah, keep watching um, here um, in about, you know, maybe we'll see. I said, I said nine o'clock, but here... Um, here soon, when we get like a little a, a little lull in the show, we'll start showing off some of the um, some of the the entrants and then ultimately the winners. And again, what you, what the winners are going to get, I'll show you guys the prize. I think it's a pretty good prize. Is if you go to um, um, shop and then Miramichi Green, or actually we can do we can do a fertilizer too or lawn fertilizer, either one of them. We're going to be giving away a carbon kit. So a 5,000 square foot carbon kit. One is going to go to each of the winners um, tonight in each category. One cool season lawn, one warm season lawn. Uh, so this is going to go out. Um, so once we announce it, that's what you guys are going to get. If you do not win, do not be mad. We're going to do more of these in the future. Miramichi Green has committed to saying they're going to, they're going to support, um, support these types of things so they enjoy it. Um, so if you didn't win tonight... Um, know that you will, you know, there's going to be other opportunities to, uh, to enter future contests, future giveaways on the topic of Miramichi green. I got to see some of the proofs today for some of the shirt designs we're doing. There's some of them are pretty sweet. You guys are going to like them. Once they tell me that it's good to show them off, I will, um, I'll show you guys what, what we're going to be working with. So, you know, whenever we do the question of the, um, you know, the Miramichi question of the, of the evening or of the, um, of, of, uh, of the hour, whatever we decide to, to, to label it. Um, you know, the best question is, or the answer to that question is going to get a, a shirt because you guys overwhelmingly wanted that. They're going to do other things too. They're going to do stickers and hats too, but they fo they're focusing on shirts first because in the poll that we did last week, you guys overwhelmingly said, y'all want shirts. So that's what we're going to work on, right? Good stuff. All right. Next up is, uh, let's see here. Up next up is Keith. Um, no, it's no name. He says, we definitely have gotten some heat in Georgia with no rain. It's hydrotame time for me. Yeah, so that's a good point. If you guys have not gotten the moisture manager down, I actually did mine yesterday. I went out and applied gra uh, a granular um, hydrotame to my lawn yesterday. I did that because it's um, in the lawn, the one area of my lawn that shows heat stress. And you guys can't really, actually, you can see it. I can show you on video here really quick. So if you look in the lawn right now. Okay, so if you, it's hard to see, but if you look, far in the background, you see where Alex's lawn, the fence line be, um, ends right there. Like if you notice there's a little bit of discoloration right there. Um, that is the area of my lawn that can, that will show heat stress um, this time of year and really throughout the summer because of the way the lawn is um, is from there. It, the, the stripes really show it off, but it, it, it's a fairly steep hill. It, like it, it, well, not a hill, we'll call it a hill, but it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a slope, right? So the, the, when it rains, rainfall, water does not really stay on that section of the lawn. And whenever irrigation runs, it doesn't really stay there either. So water tends to run off of that, hence why it dries out faster. And um, it's going to be the first area to show you know, heat stress in my lawn. So um, yesterday, the hydrotain went down over the entire lawn. It got watered in around like, like two or three irrigation cycles to, um, to make sure it got watered in really well. And um, you know that should um, that that's going to definitely going definitely help with that. So it's a good call, no name. Uh, if you guys want to stay ahead of of um, the temperatures we're going to get here in the month of June and July, getting a moisture manager like Hydrotain into the soil is a great idea. So if you go to shop 
and then soil moisture management. You've got a couple options. You've got hydrotain in a liquid, um, both the hosen sprayer and a gallon. You've got the granular, and you've also got four play, which is hydrotain. Um, it's hydrotain, it's a kelp um, additive they put in it. They also add a surfactant. And one more thing that I am not, I, I always forget. I know it's four things. So kelp extract, um, oh, and humate. And they also add a humate as well. So that's what it is. So those four things, hence the name four, four and four play. So um, the, the all, any of these would be great to use um, this time of year. It really would have been good to use a couple of weeks ago, but but this time of year before the, the, the peak of the summer heat arrives, Get a moisture manager down in your um, in your soil. It's a good thing to do. If you guys have like um, warm season lawn or, or cool season turf, um, it's, it's especially for you guys because you are entering the time of year for you for you guys. Whenever you know you just try to keep your lawn alive, uh, and I'll say so soil moisture managers. If I misspell it, forgive me. Make fun of me if you want. I'm trying to type it, do everything else. So sorry if I if, if I if I misspelled it. So there you go. That's also where you can get um, hydrotain. All right, Keith is up next. He says, do you sell spreaders? Uh, I couldn't find them on the site. No, not as yet. Not as yet. Keith, it's something we're looking into. The spreader that I like, there's only one that I really would recommend that I have the most experience with. Um, I've had a Scott spreader in the past. Nothing wrong with Scott spreaders, um, but I really like the Earthway 2050P. So if you're going to get one, uh, this is um, the one that I would I would recommend. If you, if you look at any of my, re my videos in forever, the last five, six, five, six, seven years, you're going to see um, me using an Earthway um, 2050P. And if you want to pick one up, you can go here. I'll give you a link here to, um, to where you can, you can grab one. They sell them um, on Amazon. There's, this is the one that, um, that I use. So if you look at any of my videos where I'm applying granular stuff, the 2050P is the one that I am rolling with Keith. So this guy at Keith, uh, at Keith Madison, all right, Keith uh, Madison, and um, Earthway, uh, 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 2050p. All right, so and that's where you can grab them, so good stuff. All right, next up is Carlos Picard. He says, hey, Ron, I emailed you a soil, uh, sad soil analysis I had returned today. Thoughts? Um, I haven't had a chance to look at it. I'm not sure if I can even find it. Let me see if I can find it and pick it up. Um, you know what? I might be able to get this on the live stream. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see if this will work. Let us see. It's not too big. And yeah, yep, it get, yep, it's not, the file's not too big, so I can actually show this. So yeah, so Carlos, this is your soil test results. Let's see if this will load up. Demo gods be with me. All right, so this are our, 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 um, our Carlos' soil test results. And you say they're sad. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say sad because it's, uh, I mean, there's some work that needs to go in here. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, there's definitely some room for improvement. The thing I always look at first and foremost, um, Carlos, are your pH levels. And they are definitely, um, you know, on the low side. Well, let's look at this and see your magnesium is also low. So, and then so are your macros and your micros. So the only thing you've got is iron as far as a nutrient and some calcium. Okay, cool. So as far as what I would say for this is whenever you're going to, to help um, bring the pH levels up, you've got your pH is at 5.3 right now, which is definitely on the low side. It's definitely more acidic. Um, and given that your magnesium levels are also low, I would recommend that you apply a dolomitic lime. So, you know, you're going to want to go a bit heavy, you know, 30, 30 to 40 pounds per thousand, and then water it in heavily after you're done. So you can find dolomitic lime. I'm not sure where you are. If you're in, if you're in Georgia, you can find it normally at, at, at garden stores. If you, um, if you want to link to one dolomitic lime, um, if I can find it, it's a red bag. One's the red bag that I like. Yeah, this guy here. Um, this is one that you can use. I'll link it here for you in the chat. Um, but you're gonna you're gonna go pretty heavy again, like you know, 30 to 40 pounds per thousand square feet is what I'm gonna say uh, for that. So at Carlos, uh, this is your uh, your dolomitic lime product. So dolomitic lime. I always have trouble saying dolomitic. I can spell sometimes, but calcitic for sometimes always gets me. Don't know why. All right. So there's the dolomitic lime, and then as given that you um you know. All your nutrient levels are, are low. What I would say for fertilizer, I'm going to give you a couple of options. Well, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you two products really. So if you go to shop and then lawn fertilizer, 
Um, I would say we're gonna go with the, the complete 14714. This has all your macros, so your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium. Um, it also has some micros as well. Um, some manganese, um, a, bit of, uh, a bit of magnesium and iron, um, but this is not gonna be enough. So this, this is gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting as far as bringing those macros up. But in addition to this, um, which I will link to you, in addition to this as well, you're also gonna wanna get a, uh, let me do that. In addition to that, you're gonna want a micronutrient. So if you have a sprayer, uh, some way to, of, of spraying um, a, a liquid on your lawn, like a foliar spray, I would say go with Nutrizolve. Uh, it's a great product. It's got it's got all the um, all the micros in it. So your your um, your iron, magnesium, your z uh, no, no your iron, molybdenum, magnesium, zinc, copper, boron, like all of them. They are all in um, all in Nutrizolve. So those that, those three are, are what I would start with. I would do a heavy app, a heavy application of lime. So heavy by again thirty to forty pounds, um, which is it's gonna take quite a bit of, to, uh, of lime to, it's gonna be, it's gonna take a while for you to put that down. Um, the way I would almost do it is um, the, the, the lime, the bag of lime will have, will have a spreader calibration. Um, you're likely, you're likely gonna be able to go a bit heavier than that, unless the, unless that, the, that bag has calibrations, I think for 20 pounds per thousand. I don't think they go up to 40. So you may have to go over the lawn more than once or like notch it up just a little bit um, to see if you can get it out of it faster so you're not out there like making, you know, doing several passes over the lawn to get all the lime down. Um, but but yeah, that's lime, a um, a complete or a balanced fertilizer, like the complete 14714, and then a micronutrient like Nutrizolve. That's gonna, that's gonna be, um, if you do those three things, that's gonna get you in a good spot. When you apply the lime, I can't stress this enough, you need to water it in heavily. So you can apply the lime, and then you really could do you could do you could do the lime and you could do the fertilizer, um, the granular, water them in heavily, and then afterwards you can spray Nutrizolve and then just just wait. It's gonna be three to four months before you see a movement. Um, so if you want to do another soil test this fall, you can do that and see where your pH um, has moved to, and you, you should see a nice you should see a nice bump in the next four three to four months or so. If you again if you apply um, the lime at this at this rate, I'm telling you like that thirty to forty pounds per thousand. Um, that that will help bump those levels up. So I would not say it's a bad soil test of sad soil analysis. It is what it is. You know what I mean? That you're like what you're showing like this is a perfect example of why soil testing is important because you're someone that could go out there, right? You could go out and you'd go out and buy fertilizer and you'd apply it to your lawn and it's going to help some. You're going to see some, you know, some response, but you're not going to be getting everything you could out of it because your pH is not where the soil pH is not really where it needs to be. So the, the soil test provides directional data it, that, that allows us to then begin correcting the deficiencies. So you're gonna be able to correct your pH with a dolomitic lime, and you're gonna be able to correct your macros and micros using a granular and liquid product. So it's just, you know, it is what it is, man. And you test it again in you know three to four months if you want this fall, and you'll be able to see how, this, how the soil has changed and improved, like what levels have improved um, over the course of, of this season. And then that will um, let you know if this fall, you're gonna wanna do another lime application. I'm gonna go on a limb and say you are. You're, you're gonna likely wanna do another lime app this fall. Um, but to know that for certain, a soil test this fall will uh, will tell you that. So good job of getting a soil test done. I'm gonna give you a clap up just because, because, you know, perfect example of, of that. That's a, that's a poster, poster child for why soil testing is so important. And uh, hopefully that information was useful. If you need anything else, uh, definitely let me know. All right, so no questions here or comments here in the in the gram. We're looking good, sweet. We move on. Uh, next up, we have uh, Archie Amos. Amos, he says, are the frets uh, the frets half rate each application? I'm not sure. Are you saying the frets? Um, I'm not sure what the question is, Archie. The the granular the the granular I apply it at the rate that puts out half a pound or around half a pound of nitrogen uh, once per month, and then the liquids are applied at a rate that, that that puts out around a tenth of a pound of nitrogen. So it's not really half rate. It's um it's the rate that puts the amount of of nutrient that I'm after into the soil, right, or 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 into the plant. So it's not really um. It's not really a half rate. I guess for the fertilizer, you could say that. I guess technically for the fertilizer, you, yes, you could say that because for the for Le, for the Lebanon ferts, they have two count, they have two settings on the bag. They have one for nine tenths of a pound. Actually, I can show you. There are two lawn fertilizers. Let me look at Humic Max. 
the one we all know and love. And if we go over to the bag, you can see there are two rates that they show there. The first column um, is for nine tenths of a pound of nitrogen, so call it almost a pound of, of N. And then the one on the right is for half a pound of N. So depending on which rate you're going to use, you want to um, you'll, you'll you'll set your spreader accordingly. I stick to this right hand side. This is the, this is where this is my jam because I want to make sure I leave enough headroom for um, applying for spraying liquids. So that is um, that is what I use. I do Archie. If that's what you're asking, hopefully that helps clear things up. All right, next up is Tony Israel. He says, sup, Ron and company. Received my Caravan G, applied same day. Now I feel protected. Love it, Tony. Glad you got your Caravan G. Glad you put it down and you watered it. Hopefully, you didn't say you watered it in, so hopefully you watered it in. You didn't, you didn't say that, but you applied it. Hopefully you watered it in. And, and now you feel protected, which is good. Which is good. All right, next up we got Ahmad Damra. He says, hey, Ron. I applied Primo Max 10 days ago at 0.2 ounces per thousand square feet. And I don't know if uh, if it stunts my growth or control it because I just mowed twice so far and I barely collected two Toro baskets. Yep, that sounds about right. That's it's it's working. <laughs> it's doing it's doing exactly what it should be doing. So you should see, you know, you go out and you'll you will um You'll apply Primo. Like, so if you're out there mowing your lawn, you're just trying to keep up. You're, you're, you're fighting with, you know, trying to keep up with the, with, the, with the mowing. You spray your lawn with Primo Max. Three days later, I mean, if you've done it the way I, like to, uh, I recommend, which is, you know, you, you apply the monthly rate in half. So you, you're doing two apps per month um, to, to, um, to, to get the amount of active ingredient that, that your particular grass type calls for. Like three days later, like the, the lawn's going to just slow down. Like, the, like it's going to be like the e-brake got, got yanked, right? And you should start seeing a lot less clippings coming off the lawn. As a matter of fact, earlier this week, I think I did a quick short to, to, to talk about that very, that very thing, to show you the amount of clippings that come out of a lawn that is under regulation. Like I mowed my entire back lawn and the basket was like a third full, like the entire back lawn, over 8,000 square feet, like a third, like a third full of that, of that basket is, is what I got in, uh, in clippings over the course of two days, right? So like two days prior I mowed and then I, and I mowed this time. And like, like again, to your point, Ahmad, hardly anything came off. Uh, let's see, Primo results video. One day I'm going to have a producer, I promise. When I get, whenever I get bigger, we'll see. Uh, results video. And yeah, that video shows that's a quick short. So you can check that if you guys are interested. But yeah, sounds like you did it right. The lawn is, it has slowed down its growth, which is exactly what should happen whenever you use growth regulator on it. Good stuff. All right, so we got a super chat. One here from Carlos Picard. Thank you so much for that, Carlos. Super chat. He says, thanks for the tips, Ron. I'll follow up with the lawn care you suggested and have a soil test in the fall. I appreciate the show. You are very, very welcome, sir. Uh, again, you are a, a prime example of why soil testing is so important. Yeah. So now, now you got, now, you know, and you're not that person. Whenever You're not like the person that's just aimlessly wandering through like a big box store in the fertilizer aisle wondering whatever should I do? Like what fertilizer should I be applying? You know, what rate should I be using? Is what else, what's the right thing to do on my lawn? Now, you know, you know what I mean? You went out, you did the blood work, you know exactly what the lawn needs, and now you are good to go. So just uh, just keep that consistently throughout the um, throughout the season, throughout the rest of the season, and you'll uh, I think you're gonna like the way your lawn looks. Just keep up with your mowing as part of as part of um, everything that you're doing. All right, next up we got Kevin Hester. He says, Ron, thanks for all you do. Keep it up. Hashtag Go Braves. Yeah, man. The Braves, uh, they had a good season last year, didn't they? Yeah, they had a really good season last year. <laughs> like a, about as good a season as you can have, right? Uh, 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 our, de our decent season. I mean, they, I think that, who, who the, the, the Braves won the, um, didn't they win the World Series a couple years ago? I don't think they won it last year. Was it the Astros last year? Let me see. Who won last year's World World Series? Uh, the Astros. Yeah, I, th I thought it was the Astros. I know because my dad is a, is a Astros fan. He's a huge Astros fan. So here's how, how much of an Astros fan he 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 is. He was like um, like it hurt his heart whenever Nolan Ryan left. Like whenever they you know, any of you guys don't know who Nolan Ryan is, he's like a like a, one of the one of the had one of the fastest fastballs um, um, out there. He's a like '80s '80s um, Astros pitcher. And uh, I remember when he left and he went, I think he went to the Rangers. I think he went to the Texas Rangers. My dad was like, yeah, man, you hurt the man's feelings. Y'all wouldn't give him the money once. And he left the Astros, hurt his heart. 
So he was very happy when the Strohs won a World Series. So anyway, segue has nothing to do with grass, but I thought about it um, when he talked about baseball. All right, anyways, next up we got uh, Justin Cherapy. He says, what's up, Ron, and all you lawn nuts? Don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, cue the music. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you got it, um, Justin. You know, I got to figure out a way to, to, to start um, mixing more music into the show. I think you guys like that. So I got to I gotta, gotta work on it. Start trying to improve the show quality. Bermuda Dave. So I'm guessing that Bermuda, that Dave does not have Zoysia or St. Augustine. I'm, I'm guessing he has Bermuda. He says, hey, Ron, two questions. Not one, but two. I'm planning to apply Hydrotain and PGR this weekend. Sounds like a plan. Do you recommend I do it separately or can I mix them together? I would do them separately. How frequently should I verticut? Will it help thicken up the lawn? So to answer the first question, should you mix Hydrotain and, and Growth Regulator, um, Hydrotain and Primo? I would not do that. Reason being is that one is a soil-based product, meaning you wanna apply it with a lot of water. You want a lot of carrier to help get it down in the soil. And the other is a um, is foliar based. So it's designed. You want to to use a a smaller droplet. So whereas I can do this. So whereas this would be the spray tip that you would use. This would be the spray tip you would use for hydrotain. You would swap that one out for this guy, which would be the one that you would use for Primo. So this is the Primo spray tip, or the ideally this is the spray tip you want to use for Primo, and this is the one you would use for get my eyes out of this so autofocus and get me. So this is the one you would use for Primo, and then this one, the white one, is the one you would use for Hydrotain. So guys, guys on the gram, uh, Hydrotain spray tip, Flugit tip, larger droplet, Primo spray tip, or just follow your spray tip, smaller, finer droplet. So I would do them separately. Uh, next question, will it help, will verticutting help, how, how, how frequently should you verticut? If you can do it, monthly, so like um, the end of last month, the end of May is the first time I would have done it. So end of May, end of June, and if you've got it in you, if you can do one more in July, that that really is gonna be good. Um, a lot of people don't verticut their lawns at all, um, but if you can, if you have the means to do that, if you have, a, if you have a, a machine to do it and it's not too much headache, if you can do it monthly, you're gonna like the way the lawn looks. I mean, if you can only do it twice in a season, you're gonna like the way the lawn looks by doing that. It will help thicken up the lawn because what's gonna happen with Bermuda, you know, Bermuda spread, spreads um, a couple of ways. You have the, you have the rhizomes, which, um, um, are, which runs underneath the, the, in the root zone, which run underneath the soil, and then you also have the stolons, which are the surface runners. Like if you ever see Bermuda, like how it spreads, like the long stringy runners that kind of like spread out, um, so what verticutting will do is you will cut those. So instead of you just having one, one like a long runner and it's just one plant, when you verticut it, you encourage um, those runners to tack down and start new growth. So instead of you just having one Bermuda plant, you can have two or three, you know? So verticutting initially will thin out the lawn um, and helps, it also helps reduce like the, um, like the lawn from getting too dense, but the net result a couple of weeks later is you'll find the lawn will come back. It will come back denser. Um, it's gonna it, the, the color is gonna be better. It's gonna it it, do, it will help thicken up the lawn ultimately. Like again, if you look at my lawn, which is this was taken today, it was verticut 13 days ago, and if you look at that, you really won't be able to tell that that lawn was um, has been through a lot. You know, what I mean, the color looks good, the stripes look good. I am very happy with that. I think most people will be very happy with that. So the, the key thing, Bermuda, Bermuda Dave, is to not go too aggressive. Don't get out there and turn your verticutting project into a dethatching project. You should not, like the, if you're using um, a proper verticutter, it should be set up to where it's just above the surface of the soil. If you're using like a slit seeder and you're setting it up to do verticutting, you don't want it carving channels in the soil. You want it just above the soil surface because the idea is to cut those, those stolons but not to carve, not to get too aggressive where you're, you're, you're ripping out, you know, chunks of grass, which is more along the lines of what would happen if you dethatched, you know, because if you do that, the lawn's going to take longer to recover and you're not going to, you know, and it's just unnecessary. It's unnecessary um, uh, stress to the turf. So a little bit light is what you're after. Hope that helps. Next up, we got G Free. He says, hey, Ron, Stripe Action Gang, hit that like button. Thank you so much, G Free. Thank you for leading the charge. I do appreciate that. And the next up we got is um, uh, Thomas Hanan. He says, hello, uh, maybe you've already answered this, but what are the red and blue symbols in your logo? Awesome, that's a great question, Thomas. I have answered it, not yet this season though. In years past, I have answered that question. So if you look at it really closely, right, you will see the logo right here. If you look closely, you'll notice that there's a red and there's a blue. And if you 
you'll see that the red, it's almost like, um, it's almost like messaging, like 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 chatting. Like uh, it's almost like the red is a conversation going one way, and the blue is a conversation going one, another way. So it's almost like a like a, a message or a um, a tweet that's going across. Um, because a big part of what I like to do on the channel is interacting with the audience. Like so that's why I try and respond as much as I, as much as I can to every comment. I mean, I don't always get to do that, but I do my best to try and respond to every comment. If someone emails me or asks a question, I do my best to respond. And I also do the live stream as a way to interact with you guys, right? So it's all about collaboration. So it's like, you know, back and forth um, is what the logo represents. And then if you look at the, the blue, um, kind of uh, at the very bottom, you see the like the blue play button, like um, at the very bottom, that is like, because, the, because a lot, I started on YouTube, um, and the idea is that, you know, I want you to hit play and to watch the content. That is what that means. So it's like a, it's a way of showing like, you know, chatting or talking back and forth. Um, again, you know, just, just collaboration. And then the blue play button is like, I'm trying to get you to hit play. And then my name, Ron Henry. So I wish there were more to it than that. You know what I mean? But that's, that's it. That's it. That is, um, I thought about what I wanted to want the channel to be about. Um, and then by extension with the golf course lawn store to be about, um, hence why we also do the blogs. You know, we do, we got, we put all the, all the blogs out and that kind of content. Uh, again, if you, if you've not seen it, if you go to guides, you know, we, the goal is every week. Sometimes we don't always hit that, but the goal is every week to get a new piece of content out on, on, on some lawn care topic to, again, to help you guys get the best, get the best results, um, in your lawn. If I can help someone get a, get a great, a better lawn, then, then I'm, then I'm good. Like I got an, an email from, um, from a viewer, Dante, Dante Jackson. He sent me some 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 pictures, and he's I'll actually show Dante's stuff now. He says, you know, my lawn was really, it looked really, you know, it was really um, um, had a lot of big uh, bare spots in it. And with your advice, it's gotten a lot better. And he sent some pictures. It's still not 100 percent yet. It's not where he wants it, but it's a lot of improvement. So this is where it was. You know, this is where how it's gotten. You can see that's filling in pretty nicely. And this is his uh, street shot overall you can see the lawn is um is looking looking pretty good from curb appeal standpoint that's not bad and again he's just getting started so uh so that's why that's what i live for you know you guys you guys are sending me emails or content or, or comments or just saying that hey the 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 content helped you guys get your lawn a bit better whether you use the products that we sell in the store or whether you use something else and that's why you guys you'll notice like whenever um while I do love it when you guys buy, you know, from the golf course lawn store obviously that's 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 awesome I mean the the products are 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 just say a piece, uh, just one part of the puzzle. You know what I mean? That's why you guys will always hear me talk about it. I say, you know, if you go out and you, you buy all the stuff that I, that I carry on the store, you buy everything that is in the big box stores and you don't mow your grass, it's not gonna look that good. It's gonna, it'll be green, but it's not gonna look great. So like what I try and teach is a methodology, a process um, that is that is product agnostic for the most part. You know, I, I have like a set of combinations that I've tested that I like and that I think work well, but it's not the only way to get a great looking lawn. There's people that, you know, that, that, that do other things and they get great looking turf as well too. You know what I mean? So that's the whole reason behind the logo, Thomas. Um, appreciate the question. I have not answered it this season yet, but in years past, I have. So thank you for, uh, for, for asking that. All right, next up we got uh, Devin in the house. He says, what's up, Ron? Should be another great night of turf talk. Yeah, turf talk. And like we're gonna be, um, showing off some lawns and um, and announcing two winners, two winners, not one but two. Cool season and warm season. Cool season and warm season. Cool season and warm. So it's uh, should be should be a good time. And I'm sure I'm gonna get like some hate mail and people are gonna be like, "No, you got it wrong. It's the wrong person. How could you choose these people? That my lawn was better. You are horrible." Never watch your content again. I, I'm just, I'm preparing myself for it, but hopefully you guys are going to be good sports and realize that there's going to be more contests and hopefully, you know, you guys will agree with me that the lawns were, 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 were there were other, some awesome lawns. These two for me really stood out. All right. Next up is Jamar McKin McKinney. He says, uh, let's see here. He says, um, I loaned my, a friend, my backpack sprayer a month ago. They mix Celsius and certainty and never sprayed if the sprayer isn't clogged, is that still good to spray? It's expensive stuff, man. I, you know what? I, that's a good question. I, um, it's been a month. I mean, I don't want you. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I don't know um, how long that stuff really. If you mix it and let it sit around, sit in a sprayer, um, if it's going to lose its effectiveness. If you still want to spray it, you can. Here's what I would. Here's what I would do. I would make sure you mix it really well. Like, make sure you you um because it's, it's likely has, um, it's not all in suspension likely anymore if it's been sitting for a month. Um, so give it a good, give it a good shake, you know, like, I mean, a, I mean, a really good shake. Normally I, I do a 20 count, like I'll do my mixture and I'll, I'll, I'll count like one, two, three, four, like, like a 20 count before 
I will go out and I'll start spraying. So you're gonna wanna do at least that, maybe a bit more, make sure you give it a good a good agitation. And then go out and spray it and see, because you, you, can't, you obviously can't dump it out um, unless you're gonna go take the sprayer to like um, a waste facility to, to, you know, to dispose of it properly. So if you wanna spray it, the, um, the only thing I could see, the negative is that you're just not gonna get as good a result. Um, big thing I say is just, is just to make, make sure it's, it's mixed properly and see what happens. I don't have any direct experience with that, Jamar, because I've never let herbicides sit in, um, in, in my sprayer uh, that long. I mean, the most, of, I mean, it's not, I don't th I'm trying to think if I've ever done, if I've ever even done overnight for um for post emergence. I don't I don't think so. I think I think the most the, the most the longest I've ever had anything that I that I've I've done in my sprayer is when I was doing when I was gonna spray the real rollers turf part and I wanted to get out early and go do it. So the night before I mixed up um pre emergent and um pre emergent and a celeprin and and some other some other um stuff that I put in in the tank. I mixed that the night before and then the next morning, so like literally less than 12 hours later, I went out and I sprayed that in uh, on on the turf park early in the morning. That's that's about the the longest I've gone with leaving product in in a backpack sprayer. So you can give it a go. Make sure you give it, you mix it really well, man. Like give it a really good shake to make sure there's not like a bunch of it, um, a lot of concentrate sitting at the bottom of the um, of the tank. And like, tell your friend not to do that again. Like you know, mix mix what you're gonna use. Don't let stuff sit around in the tank for um, for for extended periods of time. I'm not sure if Devin is here. What his thoughts are, if, Devin? If you're in the live stream, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, if you can you can weigh in in the comment section as far as you know leaving that you know product in the in the tank for a month and then going and spraying it a month later. I've never done it to say I have any direct experience with it. Um so can't say for can't say for uh, for sure what you, what's going to happen other than it's it's likely if anything I imagine it's going to be a little bit less effective, not not more. All right, next up is Ronald Walton. He says, "Hey Ron, my lawn in Georgia has gotten a slow start due to cooler temperatures this spring. I have gotten some spots struggling with coverage. How can I accelerate growth?" So the way I would say is if you want your lawn, a Bermuda lawn to grow faster, you will make sure that you are feeding it a, a good diet of nitrogen. So not too much, but you know, somewhere between um, seven tenths to one pound of nitrogen uh, over the course of a month, that's gonna be good. And then mow it. I'm telling you guys, it sounds counterintuitive, but if you mow your lawn, the more you mow your lawn, you're gonna encourage new growth, more growth. It's gonna fill in faster if you do that. So, uh, so yeah, the big thing would be make sure you're you're feeding it properly, so it's getting enough nitrogen, and then um, and then mow it. It, it. This month, Ronald, it really should pick up. I mean, it's, assuming that you, that's getting plenty of direct sunlight, you don't have a kind of a, any kind of shade problem. There's no disease problems. Bermuda should take off. I, I'm telling you, even on my lawn, which has been under regulation since the um, end of April, early May, um, in the past two weeks, I've noticed just in the past 13 days, right. Um, I've noticed a difference in the amount of clippings that are coming off the lawn. So it's it's going to start filling in um, faster if you mow it frequently. And by mow, and when I say frequently, you know if you're if you're if you're serious, really serious about your lawn, you're real mowing it. I'd say this time of year, every two to three days, you're going to be out there doing it. The in my opinion, the 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 minimum barrier for entry for a great looking lawn to where when people drive by, they're like, man, this lawn looks incredible, to where you're like that guy or that girl on your street or in the neighborhood is twice per week. You gotta get out there and mow your lawn on the weekend and then at least once during the week if you want to have a lawn that really stands out among the other lawns in the um in the neighborhood. So hope that helps. Mow it some more, assuming you're that you're feeding it properly, and that will help it um fill in over over time. We, we're in the go season, we're in the go time for Bermuda. So it's, you know, it's not gonna be too much longer and you're gonna really see the lawn really start taking off. All right, next up we got Gladiator392, similar question. He says, hey Ron, how you doing? Um, how long does it take for Bermuda to fill in bad spots when I have, when I've receded it and the lawn is getting greener as it grows? How long does it take? Uh, it it depends, um, here's the thing, I know it's like a, a kind of a cop out answer, but the best answer is it really depends. Like how much sunlight is the area getting? How much, um, is there enough nutrient in the soil? How often are you mowing it? Like all those things, all those factors add up to how quickly the grass grows. Uh, the biggest factors are plenty of sunlight and heat and then nitrogen for Bermuda. You know what I mean? So if, you, if you're if you doing that, it's getting enough N 
and you are, um, you know, it's getting plenty of sunlight and you're mowing it, it's going to fill in, it's gonna, it's gonna green up and fill in faster versus if you don't do that. One of the topics, it's actually one of the areas that we, one of the things we talk about, because this question, as you guys see, you know, this question, these past, these, these past couple questions I got in here is the reason why this blog post exists. Like how long does it take for grass to fill in and what, what's the best grass seed and all this kind of stuff? Like that's the reason why this, 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 uh, this blog post, why, why, why we put this together, because the amount of questions I get this time of year around um, around um, what kind of grass grows fastest, how long does it take for grass to, to, to grow in from seed, and all this kind of thing. So um, it depends, uh, Gladiator, but I'll tell you, you're, we're in the time of year where if you are, if all those things check out, you're mowing properly, you got plenty of nitrogen, um, and there's, um, you know, you're not, you're not uh, a lot of shade in your lawn, it will fill in here here pretty quickly because it's gonna we're, we're in the time of year when it's ideal growing conditions for Bermuda it loves the temperature and the weather that we're having in the southeast United States now so uh so yeah so hope that helps so I couldn't give you like a week or two or a specific answer but I can tell you that now is a you know we, we are we are you are closer to be, be being filled in than not being filled in how's that all right, Grant Gray is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. What's going on, Grant? Thank you for coming to hang out. I appreciate you, as always. And guys, we're getting close. We're getting close to walking through all the entrants and then down to the two winners. The two winners of um, of the uh, of our first uh, Stripe Action uh, contest. You know, I, I'm thinking about next, next time, I might do, I had another category, like best color. You know, best color in the lawn. Because there's, there's a couple of lawns that sit out had Gorgeous color. I mean, the stripe action compared to the winners, in my opinion, was not as good, but the color was absolutely gorgeous. Just like, man, this believes this should be its own category. You know, best color. So like best cool season lawn, best warm season lawn, maybe best color. We'll see. All right. Uh, next up is two Trilla. He says, Happy Friday, Ron and Stripe Action Gang. What are your thoughts on the air quality warning today? Are you limiting outside activities or is it so not so serious in your opinion? Um, so I did mow the lawn, I did mow the lawn today. And outside, it seemed okay to me. Like, I mean, there wasn't, I mean, I didn't feel like, um, I didn't, must have started coughing or I didn't feel, you know, any burning in my eyes or anything like that. Um, I know if you are in Ohio or, Pens or Pennsylvania area, like those areas <coughs> have, um, see, I'm gonna start coughing now. <laughs> those areas, um, uh, they, they it's, it's, a, it's a bit more serious, but I don't think if it's coming this way, the, the worst of it hasn't gotten to us as yet. Not that I noticed outdoors today because I mowed my, my lawn, um, uh, this afternoon before the, right before the show. So, so yeah. Uh, next up is David Wallace. He says, love your live streams, Ron, from Scotland. Thank you so much, David. That's cool, man. From, from Scotland chiming. That's awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming to hang out. I can't imagine what time it is in Scotland right now. So, you know, plus 10 points for the dedication to, to, uh, to stay up this late to watch the show. I really do appreciate that. And um, Gladiator says, hey, I got skipped over about the Bermuda filling in ball spots. And it's getting greener. So I answered your question, Gladiator392. I came back and I got you, so you should be good to go. So I, if I skipped you earlier, I apologize, but I have answered your question and uh, we should be good. So let me remember where I left off. And I got another super chat that just came in from Mr. Ben Raham. Let me grab that really quick. Thank you so much, Ben. Super chat received. He says, category selection suggestion, uh, best purely grown from seed Bermuda. That is, that's hard though, Ben. I mean, that, okay, first of all, that sounds like a bit of a contrived category for someone that maybe has grown their lawn from, from, um, from seed who's, last name ends, you know, rhymes with mayhem. Um, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just pulling out of the air. But also like it's, that could be kind of tough to tell because how do you know, like between, if you look at some of the, some like, if you look at a common Bermuda lawn or you look at some Bermudas that are grown from seed, um, it can be difficult to tell, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know, that, that would be a tough one. That would be a tough one to, uh, to judge because visually, it's hard to tell, you know, visually it's hard to know exactly which one it is, um, which one it is. Okay, so Devin, actually I'm looking here, so I, I as far as the question on the tank mix, um, thanks again for the super chat, Devin, I was, I'm, uh, or um, Ben, I'm scrolling back up here. Devin, on the question of the tank mix, he says, I would not use a tank mix a month later. Most labels say not to use it more than a day after, especially if the tank isn't um, able to agitate. Chipper to mix a new tank than cause potential turf, turf damage. So there you go, good. Thank you so much, Devin, for chiming in. I appreciate it. Yeah, again, I, I have no experience with that because I've never, I've never done it. I've never, um, 
right? Literally, I mix what I mix what I intend to use. Then the the worst I've ever done is overnight, and then I, sh I shook the absolutely the I, sh I shook the bejesus out of it uh, the next day. So um, so yeah, mixers you're going to use spray it and then clean the sprayer once you're done. I wouldn't leave stuff in the tank. So there you go. A guy that actually sprays lawns makes his living taking care of finely manicured turf, and he's telling you I would not spray a mixture that is a a month a month old. So there you go. Thanks for that, Devin. Appreciate you. And then uh, Dev, uh, Ben Rayham saying. <laughs> Yes, it's a targeted suggestion, LOL. Yeah, I figured so. It's like, you know what? I mean, for if, if you're not into cars, um, like there's a running joke among people that are like, that like talk about like quarter mile records, right? It'll be like, you know, fastest GTR on street tires, fastest GTR without cutting on, cutting the car up, fastest, G, fastest GTR um, on stock turbos. You know, there's all these, all these categories, like fastest, fastest GTR on like a Friday. There's always like these, all these, these little, these little shoot, these little boxes that they'll make for like saying, I have, I'm like the world's fastest in this particular category. You know what I mean? So that's like Ben, like saying, you know, it's the best lawn, but the best, best Bermuda grass grown from seed. That should be a category. That's what I thought about whenever I, uh, I saw that, so. I don't know, Ben. That, that was probably not going to happen because it would be a difficult one to judge, unfortunately. All right, next up, we have Will Dog Hail State. Will is going to work. We're going to see some of his pictures as well tonight. He says, good evening, all. Let's see the lawn stripe photo submissions. Roll that beautiful stripe action footage. Inquiring minds want to know who's bringing the stripe action game and how bad I will get dragged. Listen to him. He's saying, hey, I... He's already said I'm not going to win. I'm going to get dragged. How bad is it going to be? You know what? I said it was going to be 9 o'clock, but we can start now. Why not? Why not? We can start working through some of these, I think. Um, we can start working through some of these. Why not? We can, we, can, uh, we can do it. We can do it. All right. So as you guys know, this is our first time doing a stripe action um, or a, a launch stripes competition. Lots of great entries. If you do not win, do not get upset. I'm going to show every single, um, or a picture, not every single picture. I got a bunch of pictures. I'm going to show um, uh, uh, each of the lawns. I wanted to, you know, show respect for the people that that that, uh, that that put the time and effort to take the pictures, take video, and send them in. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to do that every time because if this grows and I get like 50 or 60 entrants, that's going to become untenable. But this this first time, since it's kind of small, uh, you guys will get to have your lawn in lights for whatever that means to you. Okay, so starting out, we have um, a mod. Damra. So Ahmad showed off his, um, this is his lawn. Looks pretty good. I mean, the, the the stripes are solid. I do like the embedded rocks or, you know, the little, little not pavers, but like the stepping stones in the lawn that helps cut down on wear. Looks very nice. Love it, Ahmad. Next up, we got Alex Plaza. Alex has some some nice stripe action. Uh, you know, the color looks good. Overall, the, 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 light, the stripes are nice and straight. Um, you know, nothing, nothing wrong with this. I think most people would love a lawn that looks like this. You know, you can't, uh, can't say too much, too much bad about that. Up next is Mr. Chris. Uh, Chris, I apologize for butchering your name. Chris, uh, soy, so I think is right, is, uh, is how it's pronounced. Nice stripe action. Well, I like, I really like this lawn. This one, this one, I really, um, enjoy looking at the, the vanity strip there on the right also is looking solid. The color looks good. Um, you know, overall, just a solid lawn. You know what I mean? Overall, as far as like a, a lawn that I think that most people would aspire to, like Chris's lawn, this is a this is a great looking lawn. That um, you know, you know, I, not not many people could say much wrong say much wrong with that. Looks 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 really good, right? Next up, we have um, you know Daryl, also known as Fairway Bermuda. You guys know Daryl Daryl Tunstall. He's up next. This is his lawn. He's doing that multiple direction stripe action. He's got the diamond stripes is what he's going for. This looks good. Color looks great. Uh, you know, again, if you look at the neighbors in the in comparison in the background, his lawn is looking quite solid. Love this entry as uh, as well. Looking good, Daryl. And next up, we got Eddie. Eddie's lawn. We got now we're into some of the cool season lawns. Uh, grass type. I'm not sure if this is a fescue or ryegrass. Not sure what that is, but it looks. I mean, the the, the stripes are very solid. Uh, you know, no, nothing wrong with that. It looks like this is rotary mode, which again, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be real mode to, um, to enter the contest or to win. Uh, one of the, um, you know, one of the, the winners actually, believe it or not, their lawn was not uh, real mode. It kind of, you know, I got to tell you when I, I, I it kind of pained my heart a little bit to be able to say, you know what, this lawn looks this good and it's not even real mode, but it's okay. It would look even better if it were real mode, but still you got to give props, um, words due. All right. Next up, we got Mr. E Eric Meehan. Eric's uh, lawn looks 
excellent. I mean, the um, stripe action is on point. What I like about this particular picture is that Eric, you can tell, took curb appeal in um, into account. So, you know, when someone's driving by, you can tell that these lawn stripes were laid out to where whenever someone is driving by in the neighborhood, you can, the, the, the lawn stripes are gonna hit just so to where you, 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 can, you can really recognize and appreciate the, uh, the stripe action. So great work, Eric. Lawn looks very, very nice. Next up, we got Mr. Fabian Molinari. So Fabian is our first video entry. He's like, nah, I'm, doing video. I'm not doing a picture, I'm sending in video. Um, again, a rotary mode lawn. The stripes are nice. I appreciate the um, the, the video, um, Fabian. Lawn looks very, very nice. Looks like it's weed-free. Looks you're doing a great job with it. Very nice. And next up, we got Mr. Floyd Sloan. Floyd Sloan. This is a very nice lawn. I mean, so Floyd, I can tell you if you're fighting with either some disease issues or some bare patches there near the house, but overall, a very nice lawn. A nice flowing lawn. Stripe action looks great. Color looks very nice. Thank you for the entry. Very, very nicely done. Next up, Mr. Gabriel Harry. Gabriel Harry. Uh, he's also rocking the, those diamond stripes. I mean, this is um, a great looking lawn as well too. You see close to us here, we've got a little bit of damage there, um, um, nearby there around the seven, eight o'clock um, um, portion um, of the lawn. But overall guys, I mean, most of you, I think would be very happy with a lawn that looked like that. So Gabriel, awesome lawn. Thank you for the submission. Uh, the stripe action is on point. Really, really like this, uh, like this picture. Really nice, really nicely done. Next up, Mr. Horatio Thomas. Great lawn. Um, you know, Horatio, you know, despite the fact that he's got a tree in the lawn, I mean, I couldn't see, how tall is this tree? Can we see? Um, yeah, so the nice thing, the one thing he's doing well, that even though that tree's gonna eventually cause problems, in my opinion, he's cutting the canopy up nice and high. You see that the trunk is, is um, you know, it's, it's just, there's not, it's not super low as far as where the, the leaves are coming off of there, which is allowing the grass to still look good. Um, great color. Stripes also look great. Um, and, and I would just say, um, the only advice I would give to you, um, Horatio, is as that tree gets bigger, you might start having some issues with the color of the turf in, in that area. So something to keep in mind whether you want to keep the tree or not, because the stripe action is going to suffer if that tree stays there. All right, moving on. We have Mr. Jesus Castro. This was one of my favorite entries, guys. The the color of this lawn. I wish I wish the color of my lawn was this deep. This looks. I'm not sure what cutting height he's at, um, but the color of this lawn is beautiful. Really love the color of um, of uh, of this of this of this lawn. I mean, it's it's a. Uh, it was a great entry. This one was, in my opinion, one of the finalists. It was it was tough to um, you know to narrow this between narrow down between this lawn and a couple of others. I really like the color uh, in this and just overall that um, it's filled in fairly well. There were other pictures that he sent where there were some problem areas in the lawn, which is which is what you know kept kept him off the top. I'm showing the best pictures that you guys submitted, but overall, great lawn, great color. Uh, love 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 the color of this lawn. Next up, Mr. John Gotch. So John, I think he's got a St. Augustine lawn. So he's mowing this a bit taller. He's rotary, rotary mowing this. The color looks great. Um, and he is, he is rocking some stripes. You can make out some stripe action there in his St. Augustine lawn. So overall, great work, uh, John. Looks like the lawn, I know that we've emailed back and forth and you were having some ears with the lawn, um, some ears are struggling. From what I'm seeing in these pictures, the lawn's looking a lot better. So, you know, it's, um, it's looking, looking solid. Great work. Next up is Mr. John Washburn. Now, this lawn, guys, now as far as like, um, as far as a, a lawn that was, um, that, you know, I, I said that, who's, who's one of the ones that was a finalist? Um, um, Jesus was, was one of the ones that I really liked. John's, I, I almost wish that John had put like a cross hatch pattern, like another, like he'd done like a diamond or something in this because, this is beautiful. That is a beautiful stand of turf grass right there. I mean, that's, I mean, the stripes look good. The color's on point. Um, I, you know, bonus, you know, plus 10 points, John, for the fact that you mowed it um, to where the um, the stripes are facing the street. So whenever people are walking by or driving by, they have to recognize the domination. You know what I mean? So, you know, plus 10 points for that. Awesome looking lawn. Awesome, awesome, awesome lawn. Um, this was um, one of the ones that kept me up. It was tough to pick between this one and the one and the the you know the the warm season lawn that actually won, but this is a this excellent piece of turf grass. I can't I can't say it enough. Really really love this lawn. Next we have Mr. 
Montre Battle. Again, Montre is working on it. Looks like he's working with a, what is that? Is that a trimmer? A California trimmer, I think, in the background there. And uh, again, it's. I think this was taken a little bit earlier in the season. His lawn is still coming in. You know, he's still trying to get the, the color to get where he wants it. But overall, you got to respect the stripes. Stripes are looking solid. Great work, Montre. Looking really good. And then moving on next, we have Patrick Lambright. Patrick's lawn was another one that gave me a bunch of, threw me a bunch of fits because this lawn looks like a pool table. I mean, it's like super flat. Uh, you know, the one thing about, about Patrick's lawn as well is that he's also got some trees, some ornamentals in the background. He's got some shrubbery. You know, he is doing that which I cannot do, which is grow stuff other than grass. So, you know, you have to recognize the fact that he's got an awesome looking lawn, smooth, looks like a pool table. Um, and he's also got some shrubbery. So overall, from an aesthetic, you know, I think if if um, if someone were coming over for a barbecue, I think Patrick's lawn actually, in many ways, is a would be a nicer place for people to spend time than even my lawn because it's got other things to look at other than just grass. Great entry, awesome work, Patrick. Uh, you know, keep it up, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome job. And by the way, Patrick, I believe is a member of the Golf Horse Lawn Academy, so you know, lawn, lawn's looking good. You're doing you're doing the work. Next up, another video entry from to Mr. Timothy uh, Zelensky. Uh, again, another cool season lawn, rotary mode, looks good, the color looks good, uh, The he's, he's, he is rocking some lawn stripes, you know, I, I, I'd almost want to see like a weighted, like a weighted, um, some, like, like a stripe kit or something on this, I think this lawn could have been, like the stripes could have been defined a bit better, but overall you can't hate on that, the color looks great, it looks like the lawn is weed free, uh, you know, great, great looking lawns. Almost like, you know, you're calling, trying to call college sports or calling like an NFL game, right? We're talking about turf grass here. We're trying to, trying to give you guys, you know, the, the credit that, that you, you, you justly deserve for all the work you're putting in. Next up, Mr. Wallace Baldwin. Another great lawn. Now, this another one here. Again, I, I wish that we didn't have this injury over here on the right side near the sidewalk. I know you have some, some stuff going on there. Color, incredible curved stripe action you know you gotta give you gotta give some bonus points for that because he's just not you know he's not like basic like me i'm just mowing like straight line and you know a cross hatch you know he, he put some curves in there and the color still looks good excellent looking lawn you know i can't wait to see once we you know some more time passes and that um that that damage you're dealing with there heals up it's a, it's a great sand of grass love the fact you're also representing the american flag go america great looking lawn thank you for the entry really good work Next up, Mr. Wally G. Another great lawn. You know, the stripe action here, the color looks great. Uh, you look, if you look at his lawn compared to the lawn in the, in the far background against the neighbors, you can tell he is by far dominating between him and his neighbor. His lawn looks, is, is heads and shoulders above um, his neighbor's lawn, plus 10 points for the shrubs being on point, most, bar, most bed looking good. I mean, overall, a great looking lawn. Can you guys see why this was so hard for me? Like, I actually on some level, didn't look forward to the live stream this week. So I'm thinking, man, there's so many great lawns and I just, it's hard to pick, it's hard to pick, to pick out of these. It's hard, you guys made it really tough. You know, it's, it's tough, it's tough to pick a winner out of this bunch. <sighs> All right, moving on. We got Mr. Will Dog, Will Dog. So Will is, um, was, was the one that, uh, you know, that left the comment, you know, about the curved stripes. He did, now Will did um, start out by saying that, you know, his lawn, he's not really happy with where it is right now, but he is going to throw curve stripe action. So Will, here's the thing. I see so much potential in this. Whenever we run this competition again, this contest again, this lawn in full swing, I think is definitely a contender. It's a finalist for sure. I mean, I can see the potential there because, you know, while I just do straight, I'm, you know, I'm basic that way, the curve stripe action is a thing, man. I can, I could definitely see... Uh, See why you guys like it. I can see why you guys like it. It's very solid, Will. Thank you for submitting. Um, very, very nice. All right, now, this next line I'm gonna show is if there were an, a, a category for best color, this would, in my, for me, would have won it. This lawn, the color of this thing, when I looked at it, it was just so gorgeous, so gorgeous. And it comes from Mr. Rusty Cook. I mean, look at the color of that turf grass. Now, Grant, I think Rusty, um, you know, based on the fact that there were leaves in the lawn, it looks, I think this, this picture was taken in the fall. It was not like a, a, a spring picture or a recent picture, but still the stripe action, gorgeous, you know, plus 10 points for the fringe that she also mowed around the, the edge there. Great looking lawn, the color, colors on point, stripe action looks, looks lovely. And, um, you know, the fringe, the fringe work again, you just, you're just showing off is really what's going on here. This is, this is, this is a nice Nice hand of turf grass. If I could do, if I did a category for best color, for me, this would have won it. I love, love, love 
this lawn. The, the pictures here, this ma amazing, amazing, uh, amazing grass. All right. So with all the entries uh, shown, I think, let me make sure I've got this here. With all the entries shown, I think I've done them all. Oh, no, there's also the one here. There's Daniel Robinson. This He was a finalist as well. So da Daniel Robinson was a finalist where you got the diamond stripes. Um, again, the 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 curb appeal I liked about this lot, about the, the, stri the stripe action job was, was the fact that I think these pictures were taken from the street and he's got these stripes running all the way down from the front of the lawn, all the way to the back lawn, nice leading lines. So from like a, you know, like a photography or videography standpoint, like, like aesthetically pleasing lawn to look at, like what he did with this was very nice. I mean, just, just beautifully done. And I also like the fact that he did not just go, which is straight stripes he did, diagonal. Again, this lawn was a finalist. This was this is one, when I, when I came between picking the winners, um, this was one that uh, that that I really was really was really close for me as far as um as a as a finalist in um in the contest. But there can only be two. There can only be two. So first we will lead off with best cool season lawn. Best cool season lawn. And hopefully you guys will agree with me that when you take all the factors in totality, color, stripe action, which is what the, the contest is really about. Um, it's really tough to beat this. The amount of work that went into to producing this this standard turf, even if it was rotary mode, I have to, you know, I, I want to take away points for that, but I really can't. Uh, you know, I, I think you guys will agree that this lawn um, st stands out among the cool season lawns that we saw from a stripe action standpoint, from a from a complexity standpoint. And that lawn belongs to Mr. Devin Mergle. So this is the this is who I had as our winner for best cool season lawn. He did diagonal stripes, which would have been enough, but then also you know notching in there, um, you know it's almost like a folded flag, like a, that, that notch, that that triangle at the top there. Uh, you, it's it was it was tough to beat this. I mean it was uh, the color looks good, the lawn is weed free, um, you know it's a tough lawn. It was it's a tough lawn to beat given like the extra work that went into producing the stripes, even if it is rotary mode. But I'll tell you, Devin, if we when we do this again, you're not going to be able to win with this uh, with a rotary mode lawn. I know you got you're going real mode this time around, so I want to see a real mode lawn next time. We may have to make a category for people that do professional turf because you guys have an advantage. But this is our winner. We'll clap it up for cool season, for cool season launch, for cool season stripe action. That is uh, that is it. So that is it. Devin, you are our cool season winner. For our warm season, for our warm season lawn, again, this was not easy, but I looked at the stripes, the color, mowing height overall, just all, all, a lot of factors in totality. And our winner for this round for warm season lawns goes to Mr. Robert Rainey. Now, I uh, I didn't make this particular choice in a vacuum for the three finalists that I had for warm season. For cool season, it was pretty easy, I mean, for me. I mean, it was, um, you know, Devin's lawn stood out for the most part as far as from stripe standpoint. But I showed these pictures between Robert's lawn, between uh, Daniel's, between Daniel's lawn, um, and there was one, there was one more, the lawn with the, with the curve, um, where, where is it? It wasn't Timothy Z's. I think it was, it wasn't Rusty's. Um, it was, an, it was a, a third lawn. I showed, th showed those three and, um, you know, you know, um, uh, across the board, everyone chose this lawn. So I thought, I mean, I didn't, I didn't like lead with that. Everyone said, yeah, this is the best looking one. So Robert, congratulations, sir. You are our, our winner for the, in the warm season category for best stripes for the golf course lawn store. So congrats to both of you guys. Um, I think I have your information, but if not, if you don't mind, please send me your uh, your mailing address to here, ron at golfcourselawn.com, where you want your car your carbon kits to be shipped to. I will get the orders in this evening and they will go out likely Monday. So congrats to everyone. It was tough, man. This is a tough competition. And I think next time I am going to... Um, you know, next time around, I'm gonna have a more formalized panel, a more formalized panel. I'm trying to get more people um, weighing in on this, where it's not just me um, and um, and a few. You know, really, it was me for the most part on the cool season lawn, but for the warm season, I wanted to say I, I wanted to, to 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 get some other feedback as well. And everyone thought that uh, that Robert's lawn was the uh, the best this time around. So congratulations, guys! Great work. 
Um, and again, if you did not win, hopefully you guys still enjoyed being recognized. Again, you guys put in a lot, put a lot of work in your lawns and there's always, is, next time around, you guys could be, uh, you guys could be on top. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this does next year. If you guys want to do this again, you know, keep me posted or let, let me know if you guys thought it was good. If you liked it, actually, you know what? We'll do a, um, we'll do a poll. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do a poll. We'll say, uh, three, three options. Say, do this, uh, do this again. Uh, never, uh, do, uh, do, do this again or don't do it again. Uh, do it again. Um, and you'll say, uh, contests are fun. Uh, uh, add different, uh, categories. So I'll give you guys three options. Uh, so yeah, do it again. Don't do it again. Contests are fun. Add different uh, categories. Can I type categories? All right, if I misspelled them wrong, um, let me know. All right, so there you go. We're going to ask you guys. That's our... Oh, that's too long. That's why. Uh, let's do this. Add different categories. And boom. Poll's running. You guys can now give me some feedback as far as what you guys think as um, do it again. Don't do it again. You hated it. Or we should add some more categories. All right. Well, guys, thank you. Hope you guys uh, appreciated or, or liked the, uh, you know, like the contest. Again, it was a ton of fun. Um, judging it was not fun. Gave me heartburn. But uh, but yeah, if you guys would like it, we'll do it. We'll do it again. And again, congrats to all of the winners. Congrats to all the winners. All right. Back to the show. Let me see here from the gram. If we miss any questions or comments in the meantime. It says, um, D Sepper says, Ron, I started getting white tips on my lawn after cutting. Should I be worried? Yeah, you, you should be. So what it likely is, um, go down, go, I mean, I haven't seen the lawn, but go and check the tips of the lawn, if they, of the grass, if they are frayed or torn, your lawn turning white or getting dull in color is often a telltale sign. Well, it's two things. One, you could be scalping the lawn, but I don't think that's, that's that might not be what's going on. You could be scalping it, but more than likely, it's a sign that your mower could use a sharpen. If your mower's not sharp, that will cause that. You'll mow the lawn, and you know the day after or two days after, it's going to be it's going to look dull. Like it'll have like a like like a like a like a dull color is the best way to say it. Instead of being like nice vibrant green, it'll be like a dull green. So check the the way you can tell is check the tips of the grass, and if they are frayed or jagged or look torn or pinched, that's what's causing your lawn to not not look that great. All these lawns here, like you look at these lawns, you can tell they were cut with sharp equipment. That was a you know a telltale sign. The best looking lawns that were submitted, you can tell that they are cut with uh with with sharp mowers. So uh so yeah, that's what I would tell you, uh, D Stepper. All right, um, and then uh, love R and R um, house um, lawn and great Porsche. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's some some cool, some very cool lawns. All right, so where did we leave off? Let me put on some um, some we'll call LG music, some intermission music while we um, while we find the next comment or where where I left off. That's why I'm not hearing. So I'm like, why am I not hearing myself um, hearing the music? Because I. Unplug my headphones. All right, so where do we leave off? Um, we left off with Will Dog's comment. So if I can find where Will Dog was, we will be able to resume the show and I will not skip anyone because I know how much you guys hate that and I hate it too. All right, there we go. So next up is, um, is Dwayne's World. Party time, excellent. He says, hey Ron, had to watch the last couple of live streams on replay as I am working on an alternative schedule. You're still watching, so I appreciate it. I appreciate all you do for the community. Thank you for your support on my channel. Uh, Dwayne's World, party time, excellent. You're very, very welcome, Dwayne. Uh, thanks for still you know, watching after after the fact, even though you can't watch live, I still appreciate it. You know, it, it really does help. You guys don't, don't know. I mean, I'd be sitting here on a Friday night just talking to myself if you guys didn't show up. So it means a lot that you guys take some time out of your Friday to come and hang out. Um, Rich 70 v says, what new bourbons? I'm in. Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny. I didn't actually buy them. So there's, um, what is it? There is a, um, uh, it's, a ha it's a Hazel Baden, which one I've already tried before. I've had that, it's good. There is a Maker's Mark 46. There's like a, I guess a different, uh, different blend. And there's one more 
that um, that was that it was sent to me to try out. Like this, um, so I work in information security, and sometimes all these companies want you to get on webinars. So one of them, normally they'll say, "Hey, you think that you could really improve the security of your organization? We'd love you to come and you know sit on this big like this hour long sales pitch where you can learn all about our products and how I don't know how awesome we are." And I'm normally like, "No, nah, don't have time, don't have time, don't have time." But then one of them was saying, "Hey, we're going to send you bourbon. We're going to send you three bottles of bourbon, and you know we want you to come sit in on our on our thirty minute spiel about our products." I'm like, "Let me get this straight. You're going to send me three bottles of bourbon." And all I gotta do is watch like your your spiel. I'm like, I'm in, just come in. And they sent it. Like the thing hasn't even happened yet. And they, the stuff showed up like two days ago. So so yeah, send bourbon and uh, I'll I'll show up at your for your for your your sales call. Guess what motivates me, right? All right. Next up is uh Lock Lock Larda. He says, enjoying the Ernest versus Ted war. It's over. They've called, they 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 have they have realized that there is is a, it's a mutually assured destruction um, by going forth and just bidding against each other. Instead, they have decided, you know what? We will share the show sponsor spotlight tonight. Uh, Ernest and Ted Rogers are sharing the show sponsor, and um, I think that is good. That's a good uh, good thing. All right, and again, thank you guys so much for all the love and support from the Super Chats. All right, next up is, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Catherine Turner says, Ron, they're throwing out, throwing money at you like it's going out of style. No disrespect for, to you, but I need to keep my money for all my lawn care products. Girl, I'm not mad at you. I hear you. No, no shame in your game. You're like, hey, listen, you're basically saying, Ron, you know, I love you, love the content, but Milan comes first. I'm like, you know what? I get it. I, I, I can respect that. I can respect a woman where her, her, her priorities are in the right place. So I get it. I get it. So, you know, I, know, I saw you gave a super chat, a, another one anyway. And I appreciate that. So uh, no worries, Catherine. No shade, no loves lost. I really do appreciate it. Okay, Raymond Jefferson's up next. Says, "What's up, Ron? I'm enjoying the channel. Thank you, Raymond. I'm glad that you are. You know, if you guys watch the content, if you guys are not subscribers, subscribe because you know the live streams are have been more of a thing this year. I've been really focusing on fixing like logistical issues in the business and improving shipping times and like a bunch of other stuff, which has kept me away from producing a lot of the long form content that I normally do. Thankfully, I have a pretty good library that's already built up that answers most questions. Um, but yeah, I'm not done yet as far as content for the season outside of live streams for sure. But uh, but yeah, I'm glad you, you enjoy the content, Raymond. Uh, appreciate uh, you watching. All the love and support really means a lot. It really does mean a lot. Uh, ben Raham says, looking forward to the Stripes footage. What do you think, Ben? Was it good? Was it well worth it? Um, do you still think that we need to have another category? Um, we see so so far it looks like do this again is winning, but I'm gonna, I'm sure to see what people are gonna say. I'm sure there's gonna be some people who say like don't do it again. It stinks. I, I was gonna I was gonna put in a um, you know Ron you're a horrible person uh, option, but I mean you know then then I would uh, then all all the haters would just all swoop in and be like oh yeah definitely we're gonna hit that one. They, they bought it up right. All right next up is Doug 350Z. He says happy Friday everyone. What's going on? And then um, Mikel Williams is here with a question. It's a good question. He says, when is a good time to level your yard, Bermuda? Great question, Mikel. So the window, if you're in the Southeast United States, um, the window for top dressing your lawn, for leveling your lawn, really opens in late April, early May timeframe. If you do your top dressing in early, um, at the beginning of May, the nice benefit to that is it's not as hot and um, we get, we get, uh, plenty of rainfall that time of year, so the lawn will will um you know as far as like watering it and 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 getting the top dressing to settle, that's a benefit. The negative to doing it in May is that um it's not quite really hot, that hot yet. So as far as recovery, it tends to be a little bit longer. June, if you talk if you talk to most top dressing services in the, in the Atlanta area, like when they tell you when's a great time to top dress your lawn, they're going to say do it in June. Like this time of this this month um is when like the heat's really starting to, to come in. The grass starting to grow more aggressively. Like this, this is probably the sweet spot as far as um, as far as uh, for for lawn leveling for your lawn recovering quickly. And then you can do another one if you wanted to in mid July. So really, you get you get by with three top dresses in a year, in my opinion. If you're in the southeast, you could do one in early May, another one in mid June around this time of the month, and then another one in mid July. I really wouldn't go past mid July unless we're having an, like an unusually hot summer. Um, reason being is that if you go heavy. Um, there might not be enough time for the lawn to fully recover w before the weather starts cooling off, and then you know the it's not going to the lawn's not going to fully grow through all the sand um, before before you know it, it, it slows down and and you're not going to like the appearance of it. So mid July, just being conservative is a good cutoff time. Now, if you've top dressed your lawn multiple times, and if in if you say hey it's the end of July and I want to do a light spot top dressing here and there, I think you'd be fine with that. But if it's your very first time. 
um, mid-July is the latest I would do it because you want to make sure you have enough time. You want to have the rest of the month of July and all of August for the lawn to fully recover so that whenever temperatures start cooling off in September and the lawn starts going dormant here in September, October timeframe, you know, the lawn is fully done, it's fully grown, it's, you know, there's not sand, not any bare dirt exposed anywhere, like you're good to go to put the lawn to bed. So that, those are my thoughts on it. So anytime between May through mid-July is what I would say, Mikkel. So if you're thinking about doing it, there's still time. Top dressing, it's a lot of fun. It's lots of, a lot of fun when it's over. Not a lot of fun when you're in it, but it's a lot of fun when it's over and you will really enjoy the way your lawn looks when it's done. Plus the other benefits of improved drainage, which I think is really one of the best benefits of top dressing that people do not speak about far enough. All right, Phyllis Lawrence is up next. She says, guys, push the like button. Hey, Ron, uh, this week I verticut and love my lawn. Bravo for that. I'm gonna give it, you know what? I'm gonna clap it up for that, Phyllis. We're gonna do it. Uh, this week, so yeah, I vertical and level my lawn. Tomorrow, I plan to overseed with Yukon seeds. Texas will be in the hundreds. What top dressings do you recommend? Um, okay, so a couple things. Are you have you ever seen? I'm not sure what your grass type is. Are you if are you doing a renovation or are you going to be introducing Yukon into your existing Bermuda? The only thing I would I would caution you with is unless you've seen how Yukon looks. I've never I've never I've never seen Yukon like personally. Um, to know how it blends with other Bermuda grass types, right? So if you have like a common Bermuda in your lawn in Texas and you're deciding you wanna introduce Yukon and you think they look decent together, then by all means, you know, go go for it, have fun. Um, but you wanna make sure, especially if you're if you're mixing Bermuda grass seeds, um, that one, they look good together, that they, that they you know, visually, texture-wise, color-wise, they look, they look similar. And in other words, it's not like, Bermuda is not like um, like cool season lawns. Like a lot of times you'll see it's pretty common to do blends. Like you'll see like a rye and fescue and Kentucky bluegrass um, blend. It's not uncommon to have blends of different grass types when it comes to cool season lawns. With um, with warm season turf, we tend to try and keep it um, keep one grass type. So if you do zoysia, you won't want to mix like different types of zoysia. If you do Bermuda, ideally you won't want to mix multiple different types of Bermuda. And if you're going to do that, like unless you had, like if you asked me, hey, I want to do Arden 15 and and um, and Tiffway 419. I'd say, you know, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, like because you just wanted to like change it, change it up, and add a different color to, to to the lawn, you could go ahead with it. For most people, though, they do it for the wrong for the wrong reasons. And I can't really recommend that anymore because you can't get Princess 77 anymore, and you can't get Arden 15 anymore. And I don't know how Yukon really is going to look with whatever grass type you have. Now, as far as how I would go about. Now that I already said what I have to say about, about, about overseeding, um, as far as how I would go about prepping it, you've already verticut, you've already leveled, um, and you did it this week. So if so, the lawn there should still be quite a bit of bare soil exposed. Like the lawn shouldn't have grown through it quite yet. If that's the case, if I'm right about that, then you're already in pretty good shape to go out and just put the seed out. What I would do is you would um, I like to a little trick that I like is to take the seed because Bermuda grass seed is very fine. It's very it's like it's a very very fine grass seed is get some um, some play sand, get some play sand and mix that with the Bermuda grass seed. That is going to help it. I find it helps it spread a bit easier. It tends to not, um, I mean, you also wanna do this on a day when there's not a ton of wind. It tends to help the, the grass seed spread a bit easier if you mix it with um, with some sand. So, so that's a, a small trick that I can tell you. And then once you've done, you're done with that, if you have a leveling rake, so I imagine you do because you leveled your lawn, once you're done putting the grass seed out, just take your leveling rake and then drag the entire lawn. That will just roll a little bit of soil, a little bit of material over the grass seed very gently. It doesn't take very much, you know, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. That's all you really need for Bermuda grass. It doesn't need to be buried like really deep in the, um, you know, beneath the surface for it to grow well. And then just watering. And then that's the fun part, just the, the watering and watering and watering. So with you being in Texas with 100 degree temperatures, you're likely going to be watering three times a day for the next, you know, three weeks until it germinates, you know, because that's that's the big thing that causes most seeding projects, especially when it comes to grasses like Bermuda, to fail, is that people, you know, they get gung-ho, they put the grass seed down, and they, they water it the first day or two, but then they, don't, they, then they allow it to dry out, and that is going to negatively impact the, your germination rates. So if you decide to go forward with this, I would say prepare to water three times per day or whatever it takes to where the lawn doesn't dry out. Now, you don't need to water the lawn until it looks like, let me see if I can find his picture again, you don't need to water it until it looks like that. Like that would be too much. Like you don't want to get it to the point where the lawn's looking like that. Like that is too much water. But you want it to be, you know, moist to where the seed just is not, doesn't have a chance to really dry out over that two to three week period when you're getting, trying to get Bermuda to um, to germinate. I, I don't know how long 
Yukon takes to germinate. Arden 15 is a really fast germinating Bermuda grass. Like I got it to start growing or begin um, sprouting in like nine days after planting it. Um, Princess 77 was more traditional as far as germination rates. I saw like more like the two, two week to two to three week periods, what I saw as far as a princess. Um, and Yukon, I don't know because I've never, I've never done Yukon. So I don't, I don't know what, you know, what you could expect from a, a time frame on that. But during that time, when you're trying to get it to, to germinate, you can't allow the lawn to, uh, to dry out. So hope that helps. Sounds like you're doing a lot of really cool things. You're, you're keeping the lawn, you're, you're, you know, you're verticutting, you're leveling your lawn, you got a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, so keep having fun with it and just enjoy the process, you know, enjoy, enjoy, uh, enjoy the journey of working on your lawn. So hope that helps Phyllis. If you need anything else, uh, let me know. Uh, next up is Ernest. Ernest, he says, mm. Higgy pop, some rain would help. We haven't seen rain in a couple of weeks. I'm in Marietta. Uh, yeah, we, well, we haven't had heavy rain. We've had some rain here and there, Ernest, at least, at least where I am. I mean, Marietta is a good, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if you, as a bird flies, it's, it's probably like 45 minutes, but as like going around 285, it's an hour and change to get there. So yeah, we're, we're close enough. We've had some rain, at least here in, in, uh, in Northeast Georgia, um, but it hasn't been a ton. But I mean, yeah, that's what, that's what hydrotate's for. Get a moisture manager down. All right, next up is R. Carter. He says, question, what can be done for areas of my Bermuda lawn that doesn't get much sun? Those areas are very thin. I can't get those areas thick. So R. Carter, I, I, I mean, I don't wanna, I mean, I can't really beat around the bush. Like the Bermuda, Bermuda is just not gonna do well in an area where it doesn't get a lot of sunlight. You got, you got really, you got a couple of options. Option one is to do something to create more sunlight. So if it's a tree, you got trees, if you can raise the canopy, to try and get more sunlight, that will help. But if it's an issue where you have, um, like it's your house or you got like a fence line or something like that, you can try a different grass type like zoysia. But again, even zoysia, even zoysia, people want to think that zoysia is this magic grass that you know you can you can put it like in a closet and it's going to grow. And it's just, this is not the case. You know, it still needs. You know, they say four to five hours of direct sunlight, but zoysia will still do better the more sunlight it has. So if that area of that um, where you you know where you you have that shade, the Bermuda's not doing well try and create, do something to create more sunlight. If that's not an option, you can, um, you can just you give up that area and you can, you know, you can create a large mulch bed. You can put some shrubbery there. You can do some ground cover. You know, you can put some shrubs in there, kind of do some ground cover. Uh, that's an option. Um, you know, I, if there's a way to separate it from the rest of the lawn, you could try zoysia, but here's the thing you got to keep in mind is that zoysia is not just gonna stay in the shaded area. Like zoysia likes sun, just like Bermuda likes sun. So if you, so if you have like, uh, you know, a, Bermuda, a section of the lawn that's really sunny and Bermuda's like, yeah, awesome, hulking out, great life, loving this, right? And then you have an area that's getting less sunlight and you put the zoysia there, it's not like the zoysia is only gonna grow in the shaded area. Eventually it's gonna try and spread, and it's gonna move over into the Bermuda. So you're gonna end up with at least part of your lawn where there's zoysia and Bermuda blended. So if that sounds like a nightmare to you and you don't, you don't want that and from a parent standpoint, um, you know, some people say that zoysia and Bermuda look good together. I do not think they do. I think they look, they look completely different. They don't, they, don't look, they don't look remotely close to me. To my eye, they don't look close at all. Um, so if that's gonna drive you crazy, I wouldn't do that. What you could do is, um, you could do like a, like you plant like a, like a cool seed, like a bunching grass, like a like fescue, like a grass that's not gonna spread around too much. If it's, if it's getting a lot of shade, you could do like a fescue in that area if you really want grass there. Again, it's going to look different to the Bermuda, um, but it's not gonna spread a whole lot and get, you know, it's not like, you, like you're gonna have like a, like a fescue Bermuda like lawn by the time you get done with this, with this process. So you got a couple of options. Well, option one, um, you know, create more sunlight so that so you can give Bermuda a chance to try and grow better. Um, option, you know, option two is to like give up that area, you know, just do some ground cover, do a mulch bed, do shrubs, something else, um, something else there. And the third option is to introduce some kind of other grass type. Um, I, I, zoysia could work, but unless you have a way to, to try to keep it from spreading in the Bermuda, unless you don't care, um, that would be, um, that's an, that, that'd be the, the third thing I would say. So if you decide to go with zoysia, know that it's not going to just stay in the shaded area. It's going to spread. And then if you want to go like with a, a cool season grass, like a, fe, like a fine fescue or something like that, uh, that, that can work well. And that one really shouldn't spread too much into your Bermuda. So you got a bunch of different options, uh, there, but Bermuda, Bermuda and shade are like ice cream and mayonnaise, you know, they just don't go together. And you know, I could say, you know, you know, the, I, I thought for a while, like, what are two things that, that I've never heard of anybody eating together that they enjoyed? Ice cream and mayonnaise happens to be that. So that's, um, 
that's my, my feelings about that. So don't, don't, don't try and waste your time trying to, if anyone tells you like, you know, we sell like a shade tolerant Bermuda grass seed, there is no such thing. If we, you know, we, you know, we have this shade at this tile from Bermuda that needs, that needs less sunlight. By that, they mean it needs like eight hours of sunlight instead of like 10 hours of sunlight, or it needs like seven hours or seven and a half hours instead of, you know, like all the light, which is what Bermuda likes. So there's not really a thing as shade tolerant Bermuda in the context of what most people are thinking about. Most people are thinking that they can um, plant a Bermuda grass seed and that's going to grow under a tree and that's just not going to, it's not going to happen. So I don't want you to spend a bunch of money and time and frustration trying to make something happen that just really isn't going to happen if you if you try to sit for Bermuda. So hope that helps. I think I beat that one to death long enough. If you need anything else, uh, let me know. Um, and uh, you know, you've got the knowledge now. You can now decide which way you want to go based on that. And Ernest, I agree with you. He says, uh, shade is Bermuda's kryptonite. That is true. Bermuda, it'll grow in concrete. It'll grow in, you know, it'll grow in sand. It'll grow in, in horrible conditions. You know what I mean? It'll grow, Bermuda will grow anywhere. You know, in some parts of the country, I don't understand it, but in some parts of the country, Bermuda is actually considered a weed. I was surprised too when I learned this, but it will not grow in shade. If you want to kill Bermuda, very easy. Like create shade. <laughs> it will not grow there. All right, next up is um, Oliver Rittem. He says, Hey Ron, is it normal for the Yard Mastery Backpack Fair to not completely be empty after using? I always end up with roughly eight to 10 ounces of liquid after use, thanks. Not in my example. Not in my example, Oliver. Um, no, I don't I don't find, I mean, there's, there might be like a, like, a, 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 like dregs, like a tiny bit that's at the very bottom um, there that's there. What you might try doing is um, once, like make sure the sprayer is clean, like rinse it out really well. And um and check check the pickup check the pickup and make sure that it's not like lifted up a little higher than it could be. Maybe you can you can tweak it or slightly adjust the pickup just just a little bit to where it will it'll get more of the material of the the the, the product out. Um, but I don't in my example I haven't experienced that. Like I I have a um, a yard mastery a flow zone and the chapin and the chapin is the one that leaves the most um um. Uh, product um, in it, which is kind of weird because it's it like has the pickup at the bottom. It's weird that that one doesn't that empties out the worst. Like that's the one you think that would that would do the best, but it actually does the worst. So my um so yeah no my um uh, my yard mastery I don't have that that problem with it. So I'd say check check the pickup. I mean there is it is it is normal for there to be a tiny bit like a, like I, again like dr I use the word dregs like just just a, a small amount of 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 product left in the tank, but it shouldn't be you know, anything substantial, you know what I mean? And a trick, something else I'll tell you, a trick that I do, Oliver, is say you're walking and the sprayer's on your back and you're walking and the sprayer, you'll know, cause it'll, it'll start, um, like it'll start, the, 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 the pump will start surging and it won't, um, won't spray as completely. A trick that I do is when it gets to that point, take it off your back because it's not gonna be that heavy then and just walk with it in your hand and that way you'll be able to keep the sprayer more level so you kind of treat the four gallon sprayer like a two gallon like handheld sprayer and just way that way when you're walking it's gonna stay nice and level and that's gonna allow you to get um to get more of the material out to where you're down to that you know that that small amount that I'm talking about so that's what I do when I'm walking and I'm spraying it goes you know the chump starts surging take it off I just keep walking with it in my my left hand I keep it you know fairly level and that allows it to get as you know get much as much of the material out and then I'm just left with just a tiny a tiny bit so give that a shot if you haven't as yet that's the one thing that I, I can think about that maybe if you're not doing would end up would cause you to have a lot more stuff in the tank than you would extend you would um, you might want otherwise if you keep it on your back the entire time it's gonna be more challenging to get it completely empty unless you're walking unless you're like ninja walking unless you're really walking really you know carefully to keep it nice and flat so give that a shot as it gets low take it off hold it in your left hand and or your whatever your off hand and see if that helps. All right, next up is Mr. Dalvin Larry. He says, Ron, I thought the fungicide was foliar absorb, hence the red tea jet tip instead of the white. No, um, most fungicides to Dalvin are, um, are, are soil based. Like you're trying to, like there are some that you spray that, that, that are um, for, for foliar, but the stuff, the, the, the products that, that I carry on the golf course launcher, like I'll show you like this, uh, where are we? So under shop and under fungicide and insecticide section. Yeah, so uh, both Pillar Pillar SC is a liquid is a liquid fungicide, and it's designed to be watered in. Um, Headway, a granular fungicide, um, designed to be watered in. Like it actually, they actually specify on the label that you want to you want to water them in after application. Um, and Acelaprin, it's not a fungicide, but it's um, it's they're both these are both designed to get in the soil to work. 
um, and they're designed to be watered in after application. So no, um, they are they are not, uh, I'm not saying that there aren't fungicides that you would spray that are designed to get on the foliar, but, but the majority of them and all the ones that, that we carry on the Golf Force Lawn Store, you're gonna wanna use a flood jet tip. You wanna use more, more carrier, more water more water. So um so yeah, a flugit tip for fun for fungicide, insecticide and pre-emergent. Again, there are always exceptions to this, but in general, for fungicide and insecticide pre-emergent, you're going to want to use a um a larger droplet and that can come from a flugit tip. So, hope that helps uh uh Dalvin. Next up we got um oh, we got someone from down under from Australia from so Ali, Ali Gabi, seven, says, tuning in from Australia. Nice, what time is it in Australia right now? I have no idea, let's see. Uh, what time is it in, Mel in Melbourne? Uh, is it in, yeah, I'll say whatever, in Australia. It's 11, oh, 11.15 in the morning, cool. So, so it's not that, it's not, I thought it'd be like the middle of the night, but it's not, so 11 in the morning. So cool, thanks, thanks for tuning in, um, Al Al Gabi. I appreciate that. Appreciate you uh, to coming to hang out with us. So for you guys right now, it is winter. I guess, so it's summer for us, or going into summer for us. So you guys are late fall, early winter, which is crazy. It's, I can't imagine that, like winter, like snowfall, or winter in, um, not so so in Australia, but like winter in uh, in July, wild. All right, next up is Ranch ED. He says, hey, I'm trying to eradicate Dallas grass and grass burrs on an eight, <laughs> eight acre property. Wow, that's been badly neglected. How should I proceed while watching how much I spend? Um. There's not an easy answer to this one, Ranch ED. I mean, if the property is a residential lawn, you really can't or should not use the, um, you can't use the, the product that um, that comes to mind that will kill Dallas grass. It's a selective product. Um, so I, you know, I, there's just not, for eight acres, that's tough, man. It's just not really a great, a great answer uh, for that because the, Traditionally, what for people I tell them, you know, dig it, like dig it out. Like the way to get rid of your Dallas grass is to physically remove it. You're obviously not going to do that uh, over eight over eight acres. And if it's again, if it's eight acres and it's a residential property, then you can't um, you can't use um, this. Is what I'm talking about. So if if it's not a residential property, if it is not a residential property, there's a product, there's a herbicide called MSMA um, that you can use that will that will target that will target and kill Dallas grass. That'll, that's the only like selective product that I'm aware of. It comes, um, oh, it comes in multiple different different brand names, but it's um, it's MSMA, but there's um, it's something six, something uh, I forget the name of it. That is uh, that is also goes under under that name. Let me see here. Uh, uh, let me see. It's um, tar yeah, Target. That's what it is. Target six. Like if you look for that, that's a, that's another um, MSMA uh, uh, blend. But again, another another product that, that contains MSMA. But you, again, you cannot. You take care of my words. You are not supposed to spray that on residential lawns. You can't spray that. You can't use it on a residential lawn. So if this property is not a residential property and you're trying to clean up Dallas grass in eight acres, then that is what you can use. If it's a residential lawn, you can't use that. You're just going to have to figure out you know, to physically remove it. So. So hope that helps. That will that product that herbicide will do it. But again, it's not. Again, I say again, not for use on on uh, residential properties. So hope that helps. Sounds like a a, a big project, man. That's a, eight acres is a lot to clean up. So uh, so yeah, let me know how you uh, how it works out for you as far as um as far as getting that you know as far as tackling that problem. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Um. And he says, uh, Ranch ED says, oh, be, oh, he says, it depends on your grass type. It's a native Bermuda base on sandy soil with little organic matter, large buffalo grass, which is nice, which is low maintenance. Yeah, so check, again, check the label again also to make sure that it's, that it's, that's safe for that. Uh, I can look here really quick. I can pull that up and see. Yeah, so golf, cotton, golf courses, sod farms, highway, rights of way. That's where this is labeled for use. Outside of that, you really should not be um, for using it. And then again, check the label and see um, what, um, what grass types it is uh it's that it's safe to, to to spray on so look that up and and go from there uh, but again one last time it's not for residential lawns so don't spray it on your residential lawn if you guys are in a subdivision do not use that on your lawn all right next up is tom v he says hey, hi happy friday it's been so dry here in illinois that i haven't cut my lawn in three weeks not one not two but three weeks rain is forecast for sunday so hoping for the best maybe 
I will apply my Country Club Stress Blend if it holds up. Yeah, man, that'd be a great time. You know, get your Stress Blend down, um, you know, and then if there's, um, especially if there's rainfall in the forecast, that would be good. Plus the, the higher potassium in that is gonna, is gonna help the lawn cope with stress. And the, the of, of the three, so let me show you real quick. Um, so of the, the three lawn fertilizers that we that we um, we like the most, like the uh, Humic Max, com the complete 14714 and stress, um, this has the highest percentage of the of slow release nitrogen. So as far as like a um, you know as far as like a, a fertilizer you can plot you can apply um, during summer months that is not you know that is getting that's not when you're likely to push a bunch of excessive growth. Like the stress is a great um, a great option. So. Something to keep in mind, Tom V. Instagram, you guys are quiet tonight. What's going on? You guys are just enjoying the show, just hanging out? Or just having me on in the background? All right, next up is Quincy Williams. He says, um, hey, Ron, can I put down Primo Max when the lawn is wet from dew in the morning? I have. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, it's not no problem with that. Just allow it. Just don't run irrigation. So, I mean, I've never applied it directly after rainfall when the lawn is like soaked, but like if it's got a little bit of moisture on it from dew, there's no uh, no issue with doing that. I've done it. I mean, I've, I've I've sprayed Primo more times when there's dew on the lawn versus when the lawn is completely dry, and I get I get a great result with it. So, so uh, so yeah, no no issues um, no issues with that. All right, um, let's see here. Al well, Gabi says my pH of my lawn is about an eight. Wow, yes, yeah, it's up there. So that's, that's definitely we're on the alkaline side, and I'm starting to get a bit a fair bit of iron deficiency due to poor absorption and nutrient lockout due to, at this pH. What would you use to drop the pH in your in um in your lawn? Um, so there is a um, there's a sulfate, um, and you're not gonna, probably not gonna be able to get it in Australia, but I'll show you here. There's one from Earth Science. So here's the thing: there's a, there's a couple different options. There's, there's ammonial, there's a ammoniacal sulfate, um, and a lot of times that will be in a um, a 2100, that will often be how that is labeled. So, you, so you're getting fertilizer along with it. If you want just a pure sulfur, sulfate product to help drop pH, I will show you one here. You're probably not gonna be able to get it in, in Australia. Um, this is what I um, it would recommend. So it's um this is a it's a sulfur and it doesn't contain any NPK in it so you so it's not really going to mess with your the rest of your nutrient programs so you can you can apply this it's going to take um you know several rounds you know to get I mean because a pH of eight is is because that's getting it that's up there it's gonna take it's not gonna be one one and done it's gonna take several rounds to help bring to help bring um your pH down into the Goldilocks zone and then what I would say for you is that if you are um. If you are trying to still get iron into your, into the plant, um, instead of going instead of going the granular route, which to your point, which you already know this, um, is you know whenever you get whenever your pH gets you know in the mid sevens, the soil gets more starts getting more alkaline. Um, even though you're applying iron, you can be applying like a, like an ironite or a granular iron product, plenty of it, um, it's just not available, not available to the plant for uptake. So perhaps look into like a a um, a liquid spray, like a foliar spray, like find like a like a micronutrient that has iron in it. Um, and try and go that route as you're trying to lower the pH. That's a way to get some iron into the plant that that's not relying on um, you know on the soil to be able to make it available. So you could do that. Um, Al Al we Gabi seven again. I don't. I highly doubt you're going to be able to get this in Australia. Maybe, but you should be able to find some some equivalent. And if you are interested, I will put a link in the chat. So I'll just say uh, fast acting. Sulfur to lower pH. So that is um that's an option. But again, I, I, there's, there might be something similar for that in Australia. But I doubt you can really get that exact product in Australia. So hope that helps, sir. Sorry you're dealing with super um super alkaline soil, but hey, you got what you got, right? You got to got to work with what you got. So I think foliar sprays are going to be your jam. That's going to be your thing. All right, sure guy says, what is your typical monthly watering bill? This time of year is going to be between two hundred and three hundred dollars. That's where it is. Two between two to three hundred is where is where it is. So not cheap, but uh, but that's uh, you also have you know almost twelve thousand square feet. So that's uh, that's that's par for the course. So yeah, that's that's where I am. Two to three hundred dollars is 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 tip. There'll be a month where that's going to be the case. So this month uh, for June. It'll likely be like in the high 100s, low 200s, and then July will be closer to 300, and then in August it'll begin going down again. So you have two months where it's like in the two to three hundred dollar range, um, as well. And then uh, yeah, and then um, um, uh, Ranch ED says yeah, elemental sulfur 
works, but it takes months to work. But that's true for anything, guys. That's the thing. Whenever I look at a soil test result, you know, pH, you know, you guys will look at your soil test results and you'll say, oh, you know, my soil, it's, I got my soil test results back and my soil is garbage, it's terrible. I should just, just you forget this, burn my lawn down, start over. I should just move, forget this lawn. Like, all you guys, like, you know, you get really dramatic. You get all up in your feelings about it. And if I ever look at a soil test, um, like uh, the results from a soil test um, um, sample and the pH is good, like if it's between like six and seven, I'm like, dude, you've already won the lottery. You're good. I mean, that's that's awesome. All this other stuff, like your nitrogen deficiency, micronutrients, we can fix that. That That is far easier to correct than um, than pH. Um, so, and you, to, to your point, to wrench, uh, ED, to wrench to ED's point, it takes um, it takes longer. Like I did a, um, I can actually show you. I think I still got that soil test. Do I have it? I think I can. If not, I can. I can show you guys real quick. I did a um, a, a lime application in the summer of 2021. And I went pretty heavy. I think I want to, I don't know exactly how much it was. I think it was 30 to 40 pounds. I think it was closer to the 40 pound per thousand rate is what I did. Um, and I did, I pulled a sample. I pulled a sample prior to doing it. And then I pulled a sample like four months later. And let me see if I can find it. I think it's, yeah, these two. And I say compare. Yeah, this is it. So if you look at these soil samples, so again, I, I use the my soil test kit, and part of the reason, just you know, part of the reason why I love this particular soil test is one, the results are easy to, to it's easy to use. The results are easy to interpret. You get the results quickly. But then a super cool bonus, like the o, the OP aspect of using this, is what I'm about to show you right now, is that all your soil tests get saved, right? And they're, they they have this cool tool you have to pay anything extra for, where you can take your different samples from different periods of time, and you can lay them on each other. So you can see how, how your soil is changing over time. So the light bar is where, right here, this light one, uh, sorry, the dark, sorry, that's not true. The dark blue bar is the soil sample taken in May of 2021. So you can see that there. And then the light blue is my pH on the from soil sample taken in October of 2021. So May, so this is May, and then this is October. And in, if you guys see, I can actually link the video if you guys want to see it, but in June, like literally right before, right after I tried, right after I took this this soil, this uh, this sample, or after I got the results from this sample, I did a heavy lime application, watered it in, and then four months later, you can see how much the pH moved over the course of four months, right? So to Ranch's point, Ranch ED's point is, it's it does take a while, I mean, to, to move, but I mean, I don't, in the big scheme of things, I don't think three or four months for a pH adjustment is that big a deal. You know, it's not, I mean, yes, it'd be nice for it to be faster, but I mean, given, um, Probably a better way of saying it is is that even though it takes time, one, what else are you going to do? Like it has to be, you really want to correct it for you to get the most out of your fertilizers and particularly out of out of micronutrients that you're applying to your lawn. Um, and it's just it's 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 something that that you that you really want to to work to correct if you want to get the most out of the products you're applying um, to your to your lawn. So if it takes three to four months, so be it. That's just you know that's that's the way it is. You know, not everything is um, not everything is fast and that's part of what makes it fun, right? There's always something to fix in your lawn. So, uh, so thanks for that, um, Ranch Ed. Thank, you. appreciate you chiming in, and uh, yeah, hopefully that helps um, El Wagobi as far as give you some ideas as how to lower your pH. You use a sulfate of some sort. Next up, we got Andrew Phillips. He's in the house. He says, "What's up, Ron? Taking a break from leveling and leveling to listen to Turf Talk. Have a great show. I appreciate that, Andrew. So you're out there, you're out there slaving away, leveling the lawn." Trying to, you know, get the sand, work it in, and decide to take, take a break. I get it. Make sure you take pictures before, during, and after. That's my, that's my mantra. All right, sure, guy says, uh, my lawn, right now my lawn is so crispy, <laughs> no rain for one month. So some things you can do is, one, water it. You know, if you assume you don't have water restrictions, watering it would be a good thing to do. And then also, uh, if you can use some kind of a moisture manager like Hydrochain, like Foreplay, those are good things to do to help your lawn like manage to get through this, you know, two month period of the year when it gets really hot, you know? So these guys here, under shop and under soil moisture management, like look into these, these are really, they're, you know, for what they cost um, compared to your lawn being brown and dying off, it's a, it's a, they're a good investment, you know what I mean? So I would highly suggest looking into a moisture manager of, um, of some sort. You know, we carry hydrotain and foreplay in the golf course lawn store, but you know, if you want to get something else, that's fine too. But I would, uh, moisture managers are a good thing to do this time of year to help your lawn um, do well. 
Uh, Mikkel, yeah, it says Astros. Okay, cool. Okay, Hoop Hustler say, is here, says, um, hi, Ron, how are you? I got my soil test results back, my um, ma uh, magnesium and, um, um, and, and iron are off the charts, uh, meaning too high. Hang on a second here. Uh, meaning, um, meaning to, hang on, I am trying to fix one thing here in the live stream. Give me one second. Um, meaning, yeah, meaning too high. Uh, yeah, meaning too high. Um, I've been using 11 and complete and my phosphorus is too low. What can I do? Okay, so you got your mag, so your magnesium, or so your 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 uh, manganese and phosphorus are too are off the charts, meaning too high, and the complete and phosphorus, your your so, I mean you could try a different fertilizer that doesn't um, that doesn't have uh, micronutrient in it if you want. That's that's an option. I mean there are some. There's a the product that's called um, I think it's called super super phosphate that is just a phosphorus product. We don't carry it, but if you look if you go to Google and you and you Google like super phosphate, I, I believe that's what it's called. It is only a, it is strictly a phosphorus product. So you can use that to help raise your phosphorus levels if you're looking to just do just that. Um, yeah, that's what you that's what you could do. So I'm trying to think. I think all the fertilizers that we carry on the golf course lawn store that have phosphorus in them also contain micronutrient. They also contain, contain iron and manganese. So um, you're not yeah. So you're going to um, that you, they are gonna you are going to raise those if you don't want to if you don't want to if you don't want to raise them. There's not a fertilizer that we carry that contains phosphorus off the top of my head that is not is not also going to cre increase those two. So what you could do is you could look at, um, you could switch away from the complete hoop hustlers. You could switch away from, nope, wrong one. You could switch away, oh, no, there I did it. You could switch away from the complete and go to like humic max. So uh, something like this, which has nitrogen, potassium, um, humic acid, but no micronutrient, doesn't have any, doesn't have any, um, so this is an option, yeah. So if you want a fertilizer that has um, that that uh, that has no micro has no micronutrient, but still allows you to get NPK into the uh, sorry N and K into the um, into the soil, you could go with this. But to to bring the phosphorus levels up, you're gonna have to use like an isolated product, like um, I think I think it's called super phosphate. I think let me let me look here. I think I think that is what it's called. Uh, no, 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 no. I think so. Um, yeah, look, look, yeah, tr yeah, triple super phosphate. Yeah, so something like that. Um, so something like, uh, yeah, this. So I'll, I'll, I'll get you a link to it here. I found it easy enough so I can get you super, triple super phosphate. All right, so I can get you a link to it so you can actually, so you can try, um, you can try this out. So what I would do, if it were me, who hustlers, because you're, because your lawn is still going to need nitrogen, it's still going to need potassium. So I would switch this to so something like Humic Max, so that, that, so that, um, that doesn't, that doesn't contain the micros that you're not trying to raise. And then also incorporate like a, a straight phosphorus product like what I'm about to link here. Like this guy right here, super... Super phosphate, uh, and again, spelling errors. You'll have to you have to um, forgive me because I am just trying to get you an answer as quickly as possible. All right, and you can get it there. So I would do humic max and that, and uh, and the super phosphate. So that way you're still giving the lawn nitrogen and pot and potassium, which it needs, and then the super phosphate will help correct the phosphorus deficiency. So hope that helps, sir. All right. Uh, David Settle says, "What's the best bot store fertilizer?" Um, I can't. I, I mean, I, the the best bot for uh, the best bot the best store fertilizer is one that you're going to buy that's based on your soil test results. I can't really recommend any of the ones at the big box store because I don't use I don't use any of them, so I I, I can't really weigh in weigh in there, uh, David. Um, but what I would what I would say is get a soil test done, right? You know, the one I recommend is the one from my soil. Get a soil test done. And then based on your soil test results, it's going to tell you uh, on the lower left-hand corner of the soil test, it'll say, hey, this is what your, um, this is what our recommendations are for your particular, as far as a fertilizer makeup that's going to help correct the deficiencies. And you could find a fertilizer at one of the, at one of the uh, big box stores that have a makeup that's similar to that. That's what you, that's what I, 
I recommend. I mean, the best fertilizer is the one that that's the correct fit for your um, for your soil. I can't say you know one from um, well, I don't know Scotts or some of the other brands that are in the big box stores are is going to be better than another. The best fertilizer is one that actually is that that is a fit for your soil based on soil test results. And I don't use any of them, so I can't really recommend any one or particular brand in particular. So. What I would recommend are the fertilizers from Levitin. That's why, that's that's what I use. So I've used my lawn for years and that's the stuff that I would I would say to go with. All right, uh, sure guy says Malorganite. Eh, I mean, Malorganite's a good product, but it's expensive, man. I mean, these days, like if you if you want, or assuming your soil test results say that you need um, that, like, like a, a fertilizer with the makeup of, of Milo um, is what you need, I wouldn't even buy a Milo. Like you want a better deal on, on, fertil on a organic fertilizer, even with the shipping is this. I mean, an even better option is um, is the new Miramichi um, Premium Organic that we carry. Even at, at this price, which includes shipping it to you, right, you get more coverage out of this than you do out of Milo at the current prices. Like Milo around here locally is like $25 a bag, and that covers 2,500 square feet. Like this product covers 7,200 square feet, right? And it's, it's, it's uh, you know, 7,200 square feet is 70 bucks. So, you know, and it does more. So as far as um, Milo, you've got, um, it's basically, it's a biosolid fertilizer. It has a little bit of iron in it. This has, um, it has pretty much everything that Milo has, but more, right? So it's got humate. It's got also a microbial package in it. It's got iron. It has some calcium. I think there's something else. What, what was another, uh, look at the analysis here. Yeah, so it's a triple force. You have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, iron, humate, and a, and a bacteria package. So if you want a organic fertilizer, buy the Miramichi Green Triple Four. It's a better deal than, uh, than Milo. And it comes right to your door. You don't have to go get it. So there's also that. So, uh, so yeah. But, um, but the, best, the best thing is, you know, you're, get a soil test done and buy a fertilizer based on what your soil needs based on soil test results. And to Doug's point, soil store fertilizers cost more if you look at the application rates. It, it is true. Like you think that because the bag is smaller um, and the price might be a little bit less that you are, that you're getting a better deal. But in general, they do cost more per application than the fertilizers that we carry on the on the store. And you also have the benefit of that. We actually ship it to you for that price. You know what I mean? You're not having to go out and get in the car, load it up, find bags. Some of the bags may or may not be broken. You gotta get the bags in your car and make a mess of your car. There's all that that goes along with it. Like you also get the convenience of you order it. And then, you know, four or five days later, it shows up in, but depending, depending where you're in the country, even faster than that, it shows up to your door, which is kind of cool. So, all right, next up is Solomon Hussein. He says, hi, Ron, based on your suggestion, I did a soil test and these are the items that were low. What do you suggest? And if you want me to do it now, what steps would you use to proceed? So low, NPK, uh, magnesium, um, uh, magnesium uh, copper, uh, boron. I think CU is copper. Yeah, copper and boron. Um... So I would say a, what I would say is a balanced fertilizer. So like the complete, so I'll give you an option here. I'm gonna give you two products, two products. So for the heavy lifting for NPK and for your um, manganese, you know, for your, for your zinc, you could go with this, the complete 14714. That will take care of that. And then for your mi your micros, your micros, you could do um, Nutrisolve. So a liquid and a granular product is what I'm gonna recommend. It would be helpful if you actually sent me the results, I could see them, but it'd be this, for the 14714, this guy, and um, Nutrisolve is, are, are what I'd go with. So a micronutrient and a balanced fertilizer. And I'll, because I'm nice, I will send you direct links to them so you don't have to go so you so you don't have to go look. So at Salman Hussein. So this is the micronutrient, and then this is the granular. Those two are what I would um are what I would go with. And then as far as the magnesium, um, uh, this I'm trying to think. Does I think it also contains? Does it have any magnesium in it? Not sulfur. But I don't think there's any magnesium in um the complete. Let me look at the label here really quick. Um, yeah, there is, there is, there is a bit of, um, uh, let's see, there is a, there is a bit of 
magnesium and manganese. So yeah, so this also cover this is also cover your mag your magnesium deficiency too. So yeah, here I'm looking at the um the label for the 14714. And yeah, so in addition to uh, the manganese, which you didn't call, you didn't say you needed that, but it also does contain some magnesium as well. So as far as something that's going to raise, does the macro, does all your macros and the guys in the middle, uh, this will do the trick for you. So that's what I would go with. So you got links there in the chat. Hope that helps. And um, if you need anything else, let me know. All right, we got real life mowing here in the gram. What's going on? Hopefully you guys are doing well. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. All right, moving on, we got Brian and Enderly, he says, hey Ron, I see it in my Zenith Zoysia two months ago. How long should I wait to spray herbicides? Thanks, thanks and love the streams. I would, I mean, how bad are the weeds in the lawn? Like if, if, if you just did this, if you just did it by, by a seed, um, you know, I mean, there might be some weeds, but I mean, I would get out there first. Here's what I would say, Brian. Once you are, are regularly mowing the lawn, that is when, you know, we can talk about introducing herbicides. Um, so, you know, and ideally, given that it's new, a new lawn, I would spot spray. You know, I would spot spray it. I would not, you know, unless there's, you've got weeds all throughout it, which I wouldn't think would be the case if you're trying to grow, um, you know, a new lawn that you are. I, I, I can't even know you could, you could grow seed in a soya from seed. I thought it was sod only. Maybe, I guess, you know, I guess I'm wrong. I learn something new every day. Um, but, um, but yeah, if you are out there mowing it, so the lawn is established where you're out there, you're mowing it, and you want to do some spot spraying to knock weeds out. That would be that would be fine. Um, even better would just be to be met to, to manually weed it if you can. I mean, if it's if it's a if it's a um, if it's a, a small amount of weeds here and there, just 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 pull them. The reason why I'm more leery about zoysia is that it just takes so much longer to recover if you injure it. Like Bermuda, once you're out there and you're mowing Bermuda, you're out and it's it's you know it's established. You're mowing it. You want to go? You want to spray Celsius on it or certainty on it or even a three way? Um, I I don't have a ton of concern about that because Bermuda just grows so aggressively and recovers so quickly from injury. Zoysia just isn't like that. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a lot slower in growing grass. So if you injure it, it's going to take a longer time to recover. So if you can manually weed, that would be the best thing. If you're already out there and you're mowing it and you want to do some 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 spot spraying, I'd be okay with that. But I wouldn't want to go out and you know blast the entire lawn. Um, with herbicide because you really shouldn't have to do that. Um, and given that it's zoysia, if you injure it, it's going to take longer to, to recover. So hope that helps. Uh, Olivia S. Fermi is in the house. She says, hey, Ron. Hey, Olivia, I remember you from last week. Thanks for coming back. He says, thanks for all the great info. You are very welcome. Thanks for coming back to, to say hi. I appreciate you. Appreciate you coming to hang out in the live stream. And then um, next up we have... Uh, Solomon Hussein, he says, oh, sorry for my question. I forgot to mention I have zoysia, emerald green. I just put down essential G. Cool. That's, that's good. Yeah. Even with you having emerald, it's still, the, the advice still stands as far as the complete fertilizer and a micronutrient. Same, same, uh, same, same advice. And next up is Alex, Alex, uh, Zamora, Zamora. It says, um, how soon after seeding can I spray uh, so Vontrazone, or I guess, I guess that's Hammer. I think that's what it is, um, or is that, no, is that, uh, how, 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 what is, what is Vontrazone? What is the, I'm curious, I know it's under a brand name. What is, I think that's certain, what is, what is it? What is the active ingredients? That's certainty, that's what I thought. So the Halfacerone is, um, is Sedge Hammer. Okay, so how soon can you, can you spray certainty for sedges? Um, better choice. How soon? So same, same answer. I mean, so Alex, I would not imagine your entire lawn is going to be covered up in, in nuts edge in the areas where you have it, um, have it growing. You can spray certainty. Um, I would spot spray it. And, and when the answer would be whenever you are mowing it. So if you're, if you're already out there, you're actively, you're, you're mowing the lawn, the lawn's already doing good. It's established. Um, and you want to do some spot spraying for sedges, I wouldn't have a real issue with that. Bermuda should tolerate it just fine. Um, for sedges, with for certainty, it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, you know, you could do you could do three small scoops. So the the measuring spoon that certainty comes with, there is a there's a large come out. There's a large there's a large end and a small end. So small, large, three of the small scoops. Of um, really should be all you need um, for, for for some spot spraying for sedges. So I, I take two, like two, like three, maybe four of the small scoops. Um, mix that with two gallons of water, 
um, and a little bit of surfactant and then spot spray with that and you should get a really good result for um, against sedges. For, for sedges, it, this stuff doesn't really take a lot. When, now, if you're trying to kill POA, you gotta step it up. But for sedges, it doesn't take very much of, um, of certainty to get a, um, a, a good result. And that, and as far as for warm season turfs, we got two options here. So you have sedge hammer, you have sedge hammer and you have certainty. Both of these will kill nuts edge. For warm season turf, I'm a fan of certainty. I would use this, if you have if you have warm season lawn, this is what I would use for sedge control. If you have a cool season lawn, this is what I would use for sedge control. So if you, if you, if you have warm season grass, I would I would pretty much always pick certainty over, over sedge hammer. It is a better product in my opinion. It works better. All right, next up is Mike D. He says, I applied a solid print in April. Is it normal that I'm seeing dead June bugs all over the lawn? Nope, that's, uh, is, it, is it normal? Is it, is, it, is it normal? Yes. Is it, is it a bad thing? No, that's what should be happening. Um, should I need to reapply? No. Um, if you wanted to reapply a solid print, the only time I, tell, I see people doing that would be late August timeframe. So I have, um, I've applied, every time I've, I've applied a solid print, it's always been in um, March, April. And that, for me, that's it for the entire year. Some people that want to have a bit better, a bit um, more control over, say, army worms, will apply. Will do another application, like in the August time frame. But for um, for grubs, for bill bugs, you really shouldn't need to do another application this time of year. Like the fact that you're seeing them and they're dead is exactly what should be happening. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out there and, and do another another app. You shouldn't have a problem um, at all, um, Mike Mike D. As a matter of fact, I'll show you something that's kind of cool. You want to see something cool? So this picture, if I can find it. So if we go to the golf course store and we go to fungicide, I'll see if I can, I think, I, I think it's in here too. This picture, um, do I have it here? Yeah. So this picture of a dead grub, right? This was on the surface of my lawn. And this was this, I picked this grub up in June timeframe. And I sprayed a celloprin in like, um, in again, March, April, so it was dead. So I, you will see some occasionally, some dead ones on the lawn. This is me actually holding it in my hand. Um, so it's not uncommon for you to see dead insects, uh, you know, um, after 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 applying this, after spraying this. So yeah, you should, to answer your question, no, I would not I would not reapply it this time of year. The earliest I would do another apovacelloprin would be in the August time frame. And again, I don't do that. I do it once per year, and it works great for me. So. Uh, so there you go. So yeah, no, nothing, no, no issues. Um, no issues with what you're saying. Just Mike says, how do you submit, submit pictures? Okay. So those pictures, Mike, were part of a contest that we ran that ended on June 2nd for like best lawn stripes. Um, so the contest is over, but if you ever want to send pictures just to show off your lawn and be like, Hey, look, my lawn was here and now it's here. Uh, we probably won't be able to get them in for this week, but if you want to, you can send them to ron at golfcourselawn.com. I don't know if you do it early enough or soon enough, I might be able to do it. But ron at golfcourselawn.com, you send your pictures there. Uh, make sure they are not too large. If they're large, then we, it, they are going to have to wait because I have to resize them. Um, but you send them there, I'll take a look at them, and we can uh, we can show everyone the fruits of all your hard labor. All right, Justin Judkins is up next. He says, I've seen people aerating slash fertilizing three to five days prior to leveling to reduce stress and get a head start on recovery. What's your thoughts on this versus aerating, fertilizing, leveling all in the same day? I don't think it really matters that much. I think if you do it, um, the reason why I do it all in the same day um, versus doing it like three to four days a week earlier is that um, if you do it a week before, like some of the holes that you that that you that you punched with the aerator, some of them are gonna already begin to start or have will have already started to fill in. So um, if you're gonna do it a day before, two days before, that should be okay. But I tend to do it all on the um, all on the same day whenever I can, or the day before. You know, the day before is fine. Same day is fine. Three to five days before, or three days before, also fine. Even a week before is fine. But I think if you think about it, you're trying to get the, you're trying to have the soil opened up and have all those 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 um core those um those um voids in the lawn um and the sooner the closer you can do that to top dressing so the day before a day or two before or the day of the better the the top dressing mix is going to integrate with the existing soil whereas if you do it a week before it's still gonna work well but it's not gonna work as well as if you do it um on the same day services that do top dressing do it on the same day when they come out they will they'll come out and they will um They'll aerate the lawn, and then they will um, put down a fertilizer, and then they will top dress, and it all happens within hours. So as far as reducing stress, 
I think if your lawn's in great shape, you know, going into it, in pretty good shape going into it, you know, um, and you know your 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 nutrient program is on point, the lawn really it really should should not be a problem with it recovering as long as you're doing it at the time of year when it makes sense. Like I wouldn't like if you're gonna do a top dress of like say a ryegrass lawn or um, or a Kentucky bluegrass lawn in the middle of summer, not really the ideal time because the lawn is already stressed out and you know top dressing is a stressor. So you so that's why you see that most people that do that, do that type of work tend to do it in the spring or in the fall. If you top dress Bermuda in like August, that's not the best time to do it. Like September is not the best time to do it. Can you? Technically yes, but it's not a great time. It's probably not gonna recover very well. If you top dress the lawn, during the time of the growing season when it's ideal, i.e. when it's growing aggressively, like Bermuda, like now, it, it as far as stress, I really wouldn't, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. You know what I mean? As far as it recovering faster by doing the aeration a day or two before, I don't think it's really going to be material to how quickly the lawn, um, how quickly the lawn, lawn recovers. So the only way I would do that is if I, if I had rented the aerator and I couldn't keep it until the day when I was going to do the top dressing, then I would do it you know, three days prior. But outside of that, I would do it the day before. So the day of. Okay, um, let's see here. Uh, Just Mike says, my stripes will destroy any of these. Okay, okay, Mike, all right, okay. Okay, you know, you're throwing, here's the thing though, you're throwing fighting work. You're telling me that your lawn stripes would, you didn't say are as good. You said will destroy, your words, not mine, will destroy this or this. That's what you're telling me. You're telling me your stripes are better than, than both of those. If so, please send the pictures. I want to see them. I want to see them. Because, I mean, I'm not saying they can't be. I'm sure this can always be better. But, I mean, those that's, that's pretty good. That's, uh, that is, uh, that's, that's definitely top 1% as far as, as far as lawns go. All right, next up is <laughs> Will, Dog, Will Dog. He says, several nice looking lawns. He says, dude, love curves. So, Will Dog, you guys know, he's the one that did the curves in his lawn, which is, where can I find you? Is this, this is Will Dog's lawn. So hence why he wants to put the curves in. I hear you, Will Dog, I, uh, I agree with you. And he says, yep, that, that cool season lawn stripes slap. Yeah, they do. They both look awesome, man. They're great looking lawns. All right, uh, let's see here. Next up, so we've got all the congratulations. Um, uh, Kevin D saying, congrats, Robert. Uh, Devin saying, nice Robert, your lawn was fire, um, awesome lawns, no entry from LG. No, LG didn't answer, and didn't enter, you know, he didn't enter, he didn't send me pictures, I, I wish he, sh he should have, he should. He didn't send me pictures, that he, or he has sent me pictures of his, his lawn, but he didn't send me pictures that were that were supposed to be used as part of the contest. Actually, you know what, let me see if I can find LG's pictures. I think I can find, I think I can find them, maybe. I mean, he, um... I don't know. He sent me. He sent me some pictures here this week. I don't know. Maybe not. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can look them up. I mean, um, but they, they were they were they were looking they were looking they were looking um, they were looking solid. Um, but yeah, they're not. It's not popping up in my email. Um, I'll I'll see if I can find them and show them off next week. I'll also ask him. Make sure he's okay with it. I mean, because they look they looked really good. They were they were they were a solid contender. They were a solid contender. All right. Next up is uh, we got Shauna here. From the Instagram, she says, I, I'm late. I hope it's been a great stream so far. Happy Friday. Yes, Shauna, it's been a great stream. We announced the winners of the um, of the stripe contest. Devin won the cool season uh, stripes, which if you want to see, go and check them out. And you know, if you guys are okay with it, then what I, what I might do with the stripes um, is I'll see about maybe putting together a blog post showing off the, you know, the, con the contestants or the, you know, the, the, the lawns that were entered. If you guys want, it's up to you. Um, definitely for the winners, I'm going to want to do that. I'm going to want to, you know, add you, give you guys, you know, prop you guys up a little bit, show your, show your lawns off um, on the blog if you guys are good with that. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see, we'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll see if we can make that happen. And then, but Shauna, um, if you want to see the lawns, come over here on YouTube or on Facebook and you'll be able to see the lawns. They were, they were awesome. There's some awesome entries. I'm telling you, this week was not a fun week for me. Like normally I look forward to the live stream. This week I was like, man, I really don't want to get this wrong. But based on what you guys are saying, it looks like you guys are in agreement for the most part with what I chose. I was not, you know, what y'all I may mean, have chose some stuff differently, but it was not like a how on earth could you choose that? You got this completely wrong. Whatever. I'm unsubscribing. Forget you. Like I didn't, I didn't get any of those comments, so that's good. All right, let's see. Ben... Raham is next up. He says, best seated Maya, uh, 12 months, three weeks old in the 45 plus age category, more with a true cut. Mm. 
Just a category suggestion, just a category. So, oh yes, let's look at that guys. So the, let's look at the results of the polls. So we did a poll earlier on, um, let's see here, can I see? Yeah, we did a poll earlier on, do this again? We don't do it again, um, different categories. And the results were, 73% were, do this again, 3% uh, said don't do this again, and 23% add different categories. So I think overwhelmingly, you guys wanna do it again. Um, we will have to see about adding an additional category, and then 3% said um, don't, don't do it again. We don't like this, it's a waste of time, we don't like it. So I think, I think the don't do it agains, we're probably gonna have to suffer through it, because I think the 70, I think the do it agains have the, um, you know, they, they win this one. All right, uh, DGS, DGS1 says, congrats to both the winners, awesome work. I answered your question already, Alex, about, um, about uh, certainty. And then next up, we have Joseph, uh, let's see here, Joseph Adkins. He says, have you ever um, added some Milo between your 30 to 40 regular applications, your 30 to 40 day interval of applications, I guess what you're trying to say. Well, some additional Milo in conjunction with your regular, regular uh, monthly fertilizer applications hurt the yard. Um, I don't know that it was gonna hurt, but I wouldn't, like I guess the question I would ask you is why? You know what I mean? Because like if you're looking to do, to, to improve the quality of the soil in between, use a granular biostimulant for that, like um, like Essential G or, or something, something similar. Um, I, I just, I don't know what, I don't, I don't think, to answer your question, I, I don't, as long as the total amount of nitrogen you're putting into the soil is not excessive, you could do a synthetic fertilizer, you could do something like Humic Max, and you could do Milo. So can you do that? Yes. Um, I don't see, I don't see why you would want to though. That, I guess is what I'm trying to get to. There's not, there's not, I don't see a, a lot of benefit in doing that. If anything, I would see, I could see using like a granular fertilizer, like Humic Max, and then using inc incorporating liquids, like doing like a spoon feeding program, like that I can see benefits from, because you get more consistency, the color looks great, the growth looks great overall the lawn. There's tons of benefits to doing that. It's more work, but it definitely is a, a an improvement in how the turf looks if you do that. I don't know that you're gonna see a huge difference in the way the turf looks if you are applying like Humic Max and then in between Humic Max applications, you were to apply Milo. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess Milo has some iron in it. So if, if all you did was Humic Max and Milo, I guess the iron could give you a benefit, but then this really, there's also not that much. So why not just do a synthetic for it like Humic Max and then just and spray, a foliar spray? I think you're gonna like the results you get with that better than um, multiple granulars. That's, that's my thoughts on the matter, um, Joseph. But maybe I'm missing something. So to answer it, I, would, I wouldn't do that. All right, uh, Ben Raham says, um, all kidding aside, uh, thanks for all the great advice, hosting the community and making good products available to us enthusiasts. Another season of my, my seated Bermuda will be in the running. I like it, Ben, I like it. I'm waiting to see that picture is, is that came across. I wanna see if he actually sent one, because he says his lawn would have knocked all these, all these lawns, um, all these lawns out. All these lawns out, you know what I mean? Let me, um, let me see what, uh, nope, nothing, nothing came across here. Um, uh, Rusty Cook. Ooh, see, see, Rusty, you should have shown these, man. See, you're, hold, you're holding out on us. Okay, so you guys remember the lawn that I said, oh, oh my God, the color is so amazing. Really love the color of this lawn. They're like a best color category. I'll show you guys one more time. Uh, where is it? This guy here, where I said the color was phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. So he sent me two additional, two other pictures. And I'm like, you should have sent these. Like you, these, I mean, you you might have won with these. These are this. You might have this might have put you over the top. I mean, because if you look here, so this is an additional picture from Rusty. Uh, oops, put this above it. Uh, that one right there, like that looks nice. Nice stripes. I mean, that was um, you know that I don't think that would have that wouldn't have been um put you over. But this guy might have. Like this was fire, man. Look at that. Look at that color. And the the diamonds. I mean, you know, still got the fringe going on. Like this would have been like Dev, you might have you might have um, you know you might have given Devin a run for the money if you if you if you sent me this picture. I didn't get this one. Oh man, next time, next time. Thanks for sending him, um, um, Rusty. The lawn again, color looks great. Lawn looks awesome. And uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's it is that definitely would have made it made the choosing the best cool season lawn much more difficult. So great uh, great pictures. 
Next time, send th that kind of stuff in. Send me your best. Send me your absolute best. All right, Fairworm Bermuda's up next. Says, thanks, Ron. The congrats, Robert. Nice job. Um, Big Worm says, my grass is all dead. No rain. Well, before we put more grass in, um, I would say if you're going to try and still go grow grass or have a lawn, maybe get irrigation, like get, get irrigation installed, and then you can give it another go of, ha of getting a lawn. I would say go with sod. Like sod is a lot easier to establish a lawn than seed. And... Um, and yeah, so that way you'll have a, a way to put water on it so it won't die out as easily. You said, my water bill would be $500 a month if I water three times a day. Yeah, it'd be 300 times, it, you'd water three times a day only whenever you're trying to establish seed. You know what I mean? And to your point, Big Worm, that is a, 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 a huge reason why I tell most people that the cost of establishing a lawn from seed is not that much cheaper than doing sod when you factor that in. I mean, yes, you do have to water sod, but sod doesn't require being watered like three times a day. Um, and sod is, has a benefit that once you install it, like you can go from a lawn that's all like bare dirt, and then the team or the company shows up and they install the sod, and you go from no lawn to you have a lawn, which is kind of nice. Most people like that, right? Whereas you go and you plant grass seed, even if you do a great job with all the prep work, you you know you plant the seed, you um, you water it well, you're getting plenty of sunlight. It typically doesn't all grow in evenly across the entire lawn. You're still gonna have some areas that are gonna struggle, gonna be a little bit slower growing in than others. And for some people, they don't want that. They want it to all look the same and they want it to all grow in the same. And with with grass seed, that just it just often doesn't work that way. I mean, I'm sure Augusta National can make it all grow in all at the same rate, but most of us don't, we're not them. You know what I mean? So if you decide to go with the 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 water or the seed route, what you're saying, Big Worm, is an excellent point. That it's just the cost of water is a big um, is a big consideration. You know, it's one of the things that we spoke that we spoke about in this month's blog, this week at this week's blog on what are the best grass seed types and how long do they take to grow. And one of the things we talk about in there is water. You know, it takes a lot of water to get the grass to get grass seed to grow. So keep that in mind if you're going that route. Uh, Lance F says, uh, Ron, you need to have rum, rum bottles around the Allet. You know, you know, it's funny. I actually spoke to them about um, a cup holder because some viewers have asked. They said, you know, why is there not a cup holder on the mower? He says, nope, we're, not gonna, we're never going to put a cup holder on any of our mowers. I'm like, why? So, you know, what's, what's the meaning with a cup holder? He says, because it'll mess with the lawn stripes. If, you're, if, you're, if you are mowing, like mowing is serious business. If you're mowing, you take one hand off to try and to drink something, you're going you're gonna to make the stripes are going to be crooked. So, no, we don't, there's no... There's no mowers, there's no, oh, sorry, some mowers. There's no cup holders on the mowers. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I, I, I hear you. I hear you, I guess so, whatever. Say la vie. All right, Bermuda D Guy DIY uh, is uh, here. He says, uh, hey, Daryl, what's going on? Still digging those intros and outros. Great job on the videos. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, Daryl. Yeah, Daryl does a great job, man. I like, I like, I, am, I like his content. Um, you know, Daryl, although I've got to tell you, Daryl, you are part of the reason why, uh, I think you meant Dwayne, but Dwayne, you're part of the reason why, um, oh no, you're talking about Daryl, you're talking about Tunstall. Uh, uh, but Dwayne's world is part of the reason why I, I'm, I'm becoming leery about doing, uh, a ryegrass overseed that, and also what I saw at the, at the turf park this year. So, but yeah, you're right. Also Daryl Fairwood Bermuda also does a great job too. Daryl always picks those hard beats, man. Anytime he's, he's doing his, his, uh, his, um, his videos, he, he those beats that he comes with, man. He's uh he's picking the hard the hard stuff. I like it. Uh, you're very welcome, R. Carter. No problem at all. And let's see here. Um, um, Eden Raka says, "Hey Ron, I'm in Henry County, Georgia. I sp I spread prodiamine in February and spray the Celsius Certainty combo in March. The weeds are laughing in my face and asking for more. Should I apply the combo again? Yes. Yeah, so if you sprayed the weeds in, if you applied Celsius Uncertainty in March." Yeah, if you're seeing more weeds in the lawn now, yeah, you need to reapply it. Really, it's about three weeks. So um, if you if you spray the lawn, in other words, long short is if you spray the lawn in March um, and there are more weeds that have germinated since then, uh, like summer weeds, yes, you're going to want to spray those weeds now because the, the application you did in March is not going to do anything for the weeds that are are there now. Like the, the, the post-summer herbicides don't have that kind of a residual um, but you could spray them in March, and then they're still killing weeds in what are we in? In June. So uh, so yeah. So yep, I would um I would do another application. 
And that's one of the benefits of using Celsius uncertainty, right? Is that you can spray them in the temperatures that we have now. And as far as the chances of them injuring the grass, it is much, much lower than uh, than other than other um, herbicides that like a three way or other herbicides that you could you could also spray this time of year. All right, next up is Jimmy uh, is Jimmy Miller. Uh, he, says, um, he says, I have a friend who's in the agrochemical business. He has a car. He has carbon type used in water filtration. OK, OK, gotcha. Um, and fulvic acid. Is it possible to somehow apply these to my lawn? And if so, how? So I don't know if the the, the the carbon that he's using for water filtration, if how that's gonna that would work in your soil. Um, so I'm thinking about the stuff that's in a filter. I don't know how well that would work. And then fulvic acid, yeah, that's a, that's a you know that's a, a good uh, biosimilar. There's there's a lot of benefits to that. So yeah, as far as applying the fulvic acid, yes. Um, carbon also yes, but I don't know if a carbon that comes out of a, out of a filtration system, yes. If that makes sense, I don't. I don't know how well, how if there's. In other words, are there are there any? I'm, well, it's in a filtration system, so there really shouldn't be anything in that. The more I think about it, there should be anything in that that would be, that should be harmful that I can think about, right? Um, I don't know. Carbon, carbon, yes. Humic acid, yes. Fulvic acid, yes. Um, in formulations that are designed to be applied in the soil. If you're talking about like those things that come out of a water filtration system, I would think they'd be okay, but I can't say for sure. So, you know, I, I, I don't, in that particular use case, my answer is I don't know. I don't know. But the, the individual products that you mentioned, yes, that absolutely has tons of benefits. I just don't know that if you get them out of a water filtration system, if that's the way, um, if that's a good idea. So hope that helps. It probably wasn't very helpful, but hopefully you understand my thought process as to why I gave you a I am not sure answer to that question. All right, Will Dog State is up next. He says, Bush Stadium ripped out the bluegrasses with and laid Bermuda sod. Um, nothing wrong with bluegrass, but I mean, come on. Bermuda needs more love. 100,000 square feet of sod and a few hundred tons, a few hundred tons of sand. Now, how's that for renovation? Yeah, it's a major, that's major, man. It's a big job, but I'm sure it's gonna look really good. Sure, it's gonna look awesome. You can't go wrong with Bermuda. It's great grass. All right, next up is Quinn A K Blind in Twenty One says, "Great show. I will make this my Friday night routine. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Definitely. Um, and we do it every Friday night. Um, other than you know, there's, there's like two or three Fridays out of the year when we don't do it, and it's normal because of something having to do with my martial arts um routine. Something have to do with. It. And that's a good point because the end of June. That's a good point. So the so June twenty third. Um, the live stream will not be on the 23rd. It will be likely the day before on the 22nd, on a Thursday, because um, Friday, that, that 23rd is Black Belt Camp. And I got to be there for that because apparently I get to help with the um, testing candidates this year. Yay for me. Um, so there's that. Um, so yeah, on the 23rd, it's going to be on a Thursday. But outside of that, outside of like three Fridays out of the entire year, it's pretty much all, it's always on a Friday night. So for the most part, you can, you can go, you can mark your calendar on Friday night, seven o'clock Eastern. And uh, that's when the show will be, will start. So yeah, I appreciate that cue blind and I'm glad you're enjoying it and look forward to uh, seeing you on future shows. Next up is triple tri triple a says, uh, how about diesel exhaust for you at def as a cheap nitrogen boost for in between your normal treatments? Um, I get you can't. I mean, it is nitrogen. You can use it if you want. I just I don't because like nitrogen. I'm, I'm, I'll put you this way. Um, um, TR play one. I can't think of a single time when I have a, I've sprayed strictly nitrogen on my lawn. As a matter of fact, I I would go out on a limb and say that I've never done that. It's always nitrogen and potassium. Nitrogen, potassium, and a micronutrient. Nitrogen, potassium, micronutrient, and and a growth regulator or a biosimilant. So I've never, I've never sprayed just nitrogen by itself. I spray, I typically spray other things along with it. So for that reason, diesel exhaust fluid is not a great, is not a great fit. I mean, it's a, it is a cheaper source of, or I mean, some people think it's a cheaper source or less expensive source of nitrogen, but it's not, it's not, it's cheaper in the sense of that if all you're looking for is nitrogen. Um, but if you compare it to say like, straight urea. Straight urea is also inexpensive. And I've not done the comparison, the price comparison between them, but I imagine that it's probably not going to be that much cheaper than like, you know, a straight urea product, right? But if you're comparing like 
deaf against like a like a, a combination um, a, a blended liquid fertilizer, then yeah, it's cheaper, but then you're comparing things that aren't really the same. You're comparing something that's just strictly nitrogen versus something that is nitrogen, you know, potassium, micronutrients, maybe some kelp in there. So there's a lot more stuff going on with it. So for, for these reasons, I just don't, I don't do that. I don't spray it. For the same reason I don't use um, straight urea on my lawn, it's the same reason I don't use um, diesel exhaust fluid because it's just, I, I, don't, I don't spray just straight nitrogen. I always, I'm always straight spraying a blend of stuff. So, um, so if it were me, in between your major, your 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 major your granular applications, I would find a liquid fertilizer that you like. We carry a bunch of them in the Golf Force Lawn Store, but you have to get one from us necessarily. But just find a liquid fertilizer that you like that has, you know, a bit of nitrogen, some potassium in it, and then some micronutrients. Like if you do, if you find a fruit that has that, I think you're going to like the way the lawn looks better than just spraying a um, like spraying diesel exhaust fluid on it. So, uh, so there you go. Like the only real benefit to it is that it's cheap. And I don't really know that it's actually that much cheaper if you compare it to like straight urea. So um, it might be, but I, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be that much of a difference. All right, next up is uh, Mike CS. He says, how do you determine your, micro, your, your nitrogen rates? Have you looked at the PACE turf appraisal spreadsheet? I have not looked at the PACE turf appraisal spreadsheet. Uh, as far as the, my nitrogen rates, um, so for Bermuda, as a, in a, as a general rule, it requires around a pound of nitrogen per month whenever the lawn is actively growing, right? So about a pound of N every month when it's actively growing. Um, and I just, I build my program around that. And I don't actually, and I actually end up applying less than that. I don't actually get up to a pound of nitrogen. If you take everything that I do all in, I'm around seven tenths of a pound of nitrogen with all the inputs over the course of a month. So I, I for my particular grass type, I, I there's research that says for this grass type, this is how much nitrogen you should be giving it, um, and I build my program around that, and that's that's worked uh, that's worked pretty well. So that is how I that is how I do it, uh, Mike. All right. So next up we have um, uh, Br Brian Enderlin. I'm getting tons of goose grass. I think when Clorac will kill that. I think so. Uh, let us see. I mean, you didn't, you didn't tell me, Brian, what's your um, what's your grass type is. Hopefully it's not like centipede or St. Augustine. Um, but I think it will, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's certain I'm thinking about. There's another, there's another herbicide I was looking at here recently that will, that is, that will target goose grass. Now you got me, now you got me thinking here. Um, will cert, is it certainty I was thinking about? Let's see. Let us look. Let us look. Let us find out. Um, dun, 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 dun. Johnson grass, quack grass. No, I was thinking about quack grass, not not goose grass. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, uh, dun, 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 dun. I could have sworn. I, I thought it was Clark. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. You so you're getting tons of goose grass. Um, what, what I can do with this, Brian, since I don't have an answer for you now, is if you can send me an email here to ron at golfcourselawn.com. Uh, the, the most important thing, the most important thing, and this is for everybody, whenever you guys send me emails and you say, hey, I have this particular weed in my lawn or I, or I need a, I'm trying to kill this particular, you know, insert weed or some plant here, is you got to tell me what kind of grass you have. Because without that, it's difficult to know, um, again, difficult, it's impossible to recommend something in good conscience that is not going to damage your uh, your lawn. So, Brian, if you want, email me here, ron at golfcourselawn.com, with what your grass type is, and I'll um, I'll email you back with some options for targeting, uh, for targeting goose grass. All right, next up is Mason RC. He says, thank you for sharing my lawn pick for Stripe Action. Love your show. I didn't realize that I needed to send the most recent picture. You don't have to. I mean, it's, it's I'm just, I, I just, I just noticed that it was not, it looked like it was in the fall. It's fine. Um, I just email more recent picks. Turf type, tall fescue, Carrollton, Georgia. Awesome, man. Yeah, lawn looks awesome. I think I just put them up. They look really, uh, they look, they look solid, man. Great work. All right, next up is Nathaniel Bunting. Um, it says, hey, Ron, I purchased a new home and the lawn has a bit of everything for weeds. It's a Bermuda lawn. So my question is, should I mow before applying Celsius and Certainty Combo? So if you can, if you can um, allow there to be, if you can resist mowing, so you just moved in there, so it's already weedy. It's already got weeds all in it. So a couple more days is not going to hurt anything. So what I, would, what I would do is this. You just moved in. There's weeds everywhere. I get that it looks ugly. 
resist mowing. Don't mow yet. Get the um, the Celsius Uncertainty combo if you don't already have it and spray the lawn with that. Two to three days after you've sprayed, then you can mow. Because the fact that, you know, if you can spray the weeds when there's more leaf, that's gonna, that's gonna improve the uptake. You're gonna get a better result as far as controlling them um, with hopefully a single application. Depends how bad how bad the weeds are, you know what I mean? Um, so that would be my advice. That's the route that I would go is I would not, I would resist the temptation to mow, spray the lawn, blanket spray the lawn, give it a few days, and then you can start your mowing, and then you'll find that the lawn, the, the weeds will um, will die off versus cutting off all that nice leaf, all that nice foliage, and then you know give it a few days and then spraying the lawn then because you you're, you have less you have less area, less skin to uptake the um, the herbicide. So I would wait. And Nathaniel says, how soon after applying the combo can I mow? I would give it at least two days, um, three even better, but at least two days. If you spray on a Monday, I would mow on a Thursday. You, Thursday, you can start your mowing up again. Next up is Demarculus Thompson. Let's go on Demarculus. He says, greetings, Ron. Is there a selective um, herbicide for poison ivy in Bermuda? I don't know off the top of my head. I'm going to look at the label for... For cert for Celsius and C, um, I don't know if poison ivy's on there. There's a lot of things on there. Let's see. Let us see. Let us learn together, Demarculus. If it's not, I'm gonna have to look up, look it up, and get back to you. Um, dun, 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 dun. Let, me, let me zoom in here. And um, yeah, I don't see. I don't think so. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't see that on here as far as IVs go. Ground ivy and ivy leaf. Yeah, I don't see poison ivy. I'll have to, I'll have to look and see um, for you, um, DeMarco Lewis. I don't know the answer to that one. So um, if you can, send me an email to ron at golfcourselon.com with your email, and I'll um, I'll find an answer for you, and I will email you back. I will email you back. I'll get you, uh, I'll get you an answer. Uh, next up, we have Tom Hoffenkamp. He says, uh, rainy for the win, impressive. I want to move there. Demare, equally amazing. Well done. I agree. They did really, they have uh, some really nice lawns, man. They did, uh, I'm glad I wasn't competing against them. No Name is up next. He says, uh, Ron, next time you get a vendor giving away bourbon, I fully <laughs> expect a note from you requesting they invite me as well. Yeah, I, I guess I could find it. It might not be too late. So I think it's not till, not even next week. I think it might be a little bit longer. So I'll, I'll see if I can find it no name and I'll I'll send it to you. I'll I'll look and see if I can uh, remember their name. Actually, I can I have their card on the on the, the island, so I can I, I I can be able to find it. I'll be able to find it and get it to you. All right, uh, let's see here. Larry uh, Price is up next. He says, "Working hard on a Bermuda lawn in Southern California. The struggle is real." Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, the struggle, depending on what you're dealing with, can be real. But I mean, Bermuda in Southern California should do fairly well. Larry shouldn't be too bad to do that. It shouldn't be that. Uh, it shouldn't be that bad. It should be it should do okay, I would think. All right, let me see if there's any other questions here. Uh, no name is, is seconding my comment that that Milo is more expensive for application than higher quality synthetic fertilizer. Now that is true. I mean, you know, you look at Milo. It's a it's a it's a great product for what it's a good product for what it is. But it's if you want an organic, the Miramichi Green Organic is better and costs less per application than Milo does. And if you want, you know, if you can go for synthetic fur, then the the world's your oyster. You can get all kinds of all kinds of cool stuff in there. You know, you get, you know, get a biostimulant, micronutrients, you get everything all, all mixed in there. So it's, um, it's the, the value proposition for Milo. Like when Milo was like, you know, $12 a bag, it made a lot of sense at $25 a bag. It's less, um, it's less of a good deal when you compare it to other options that are out there now. All right. Uh, Isaac says, I drink and drive with my, my Toro zero turn. Mowing is fun. <laughs> Like smashed. Thank you so much, uh, Isaac. But do you keep the stripes straight, Isaac? If you do that, when you're on the mower and you're drinking whatever you're drinking, are the stripes still coming out good or is there like some swerve in the stripes? You know? All right, next up is uh, uh, Jimmy Miller. He says, carbon is, is the type that's used in filtration camp and has never been used. I still don't know. Because I, I don't know if it's the kind that will... Um, well, well, I'll tell you this much. Uh, as far as carbon, there are um, you. As far as well, biochar anyway, which basically is carbon. You want charged biochar if you can get it. Be reason being is that if you take um, uncharged biochar and put that into your lawn, into your into your soil, initially until all those pockets are filled in, it's actually a, a net 
a taker. So if you were to go out and, and I think the guys at MySoil have proven this, if you, they, they did some, uh, some testing on uncharged biochar. Um, if you go out and you, you apply biochar or carbon, uncharged carbon to a, to a lawn, to a soil, um, and then you go out and you take soil tests, you pull soil tests a couple of weeks later, you'll actually see a reduction in nutrient levels. Um, and then as you continue to feed the lawn, the nutrient levels will come back up. And the reason for that is because uncharged biochar, like it's going to, again, it's going to absorb um, nutrients from the soil because all those little pockets the, that, that, that are in carbon are unfilled. The, the um, biochar that Miramichi cells, and I want to say the Andersons as well too, I think theirs is, is also charged as well, um, is charged, meaning that all those pockets are filled with stuff before you put them in the, in the, uh, the, the term that you say is it's inoculated. It's already, it's inoculated biochar. It's already got, it's already got some good stuff in there. So when you apply it, it's a net provider to your soil versus a net taker. So um, that's one thing I might, you might consider, Jimmy, if as far as that being a consideration, all things being equal, let's say it's going to perform the same way, you can apply it, it's not going to have any weird um, effects. Like if it's uncharged, um, that is one thing you want to prepare for. And it's, it's, it's a temporary thing. You know, as you continue to feed the lawn, um, it, the nutrient levels will come right back. But that's something you might want to consider when you're using um, an uncharged carbon product. So... Give it a shot and let me know. Let us know how it works out. You can try it and, and, uh, and report back. You know what I mean? Okay, next up is Oliver uh, Ritzum. He says, on Wednesday, I applied certainty on my lawn around noon. Okay, then, so Wednesday you applied, okay. And then on Thursday at 4 p.m., it rained heavily for about 15 minutes. You're fine. Um, do you think there was enough time for the certainty to, be of, to, soak, to soak in? The temps were 90. Yeah, so you applied it literally the day before. At noon, yeah. That you're, you're, I mean, four hours later, especially if you're using surfactant with it, you're you're good to go. So the next day, you're ab you're absolutely fine. I wouldn't I wouldn't worry at I worry at all, uh, Oliver. Um, no need. And I guess if, if if I'm reading between the lines, the answer to your question is there's no need to go out and do another application of it uh, due to the fact that you had rain the following day. You are you're good to go. All right. Uh, next up is Dada K says. Um, can we use this for a soil wetting agent, Southern Ag surfactant for herbicides, non ionic? N no, that's that's designed to be mixed with. It's in the name with herbicides. It's not designed um, for for you to blanket spray the lawn with it as a moisture manager. So it's a so it's a, it is a wetting agent, but it's not a. You want to use something that's, that's designed to be a moisture manager, not um, not that. I mean that product again in the name is for is for herbicides. It's designed to be mixed with like Celsius or Certainty or, you know, a three-way or whatever, whatever you decide to do, whatever, whatever you're doing. You don't want to um, like spray that all over your lawn to be used as a moisture manager. That crazy lawn guy is here. He says, I missed out on the show for the last few weeks. Was I could have submitted my stripes, no folded flag or anything? Yeah, you could have, you could have submitted them. I mean, it doesn't matter. And I, I mean, the big thing is there's a way for you guys to show off too, right? Even if you didn't win, it's a way to show uh, show off all your hard work. I mean, as long as YouTube is around, like that live stream, you can take you can go to your friends and family and say, "Hey, look, go to this part, this you know, this period, this this timestamp in the live stream. You can see my lawn live on the internet. You know, compared to all these other lawns, like told you guys, my lawn is more awesome than these other lawns. Or you can see what I'm trying to achieve based on these other lawns. So it's it's cool. So for you guys to show off, show off a little, show off and show out, right? That's part of it. All right, next is Dada K. He says, what do you think about Moisturize MZC032 Quart Concentrate Anti-Transparent Gray to minimize water vaporization in the summer? It sounds cool. I, I'm not familiar with that particular product, Dada, but um, I'm not for, I'll look, actually do a screenshot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up. Look it up after the show and see what people are saying about it. What I would say is this, look at the reviews, see what people say about the reviews about that particular product. And if the reviews are good and you can get that locally or you just wanna give that a shot, give it a go and see how it, uh, how it does for you. I can speak to hydro tanks. I know that I, that's what I use and it works, it works very well. Um, you know, there's other moisture managers out there. Hydro tank is not the only one. There are other good moisture managers as well. Uh, so it just, um, just depends on what you, um, on what you want to go with, you know? Uh, but I would let the reviews be your guide if you've not used that one before. So Isaac says, sometimes they are straight. <laughs> I do the front first, so the stripes are straight there. So you you make sure the front, the front, the area you do really care about, like those stripes are in good shape. And then the back lawn, eh, it's, you know. So, so it's business up front, party in the back. Is this what I'm hearing? Okay, I got it. 
I got it. Kevin Hines says, I applied Milo three days ago. How long should I wait before I can apply Southern Ag Liquid Iron? Uh, you could have done them on the same day. You could. Done, it, there's not really a, I mean, you could have done the same day if you wanted to. Cool season grass we're talking here, thank you. So if you did it three days ago, if you want to go, on go if you want to go out and spray your liquid iron tomorrow, you absolutely can. Be mindful that Milo does have iron in it, but given that it's an organic fertilizer and very slow release, uh, you're, if you go out and you spray the lawn tomorrow with the Southern Ag liquid, liquid Iron, it's more than likely you'll see a faster color response from the liquid iron products you're gonna spray if you decide to do it tomorrow than you will from Milorganite. So you're you're absolutely fine. No, uh, no worries there. All right, Gordon says, love the videos. I appreciate that, Gordon. Thank you for all the love and support. And then next up, we got Quincy Williams saying, how soon can I mow after spraying Primo Max? Um, I like to give it two, two, two to three days, um, Quincy. So if you spray on a Monday, mow on Thursday if you can. If you really want to, you can mow Wednesday afternoon. But if you can spray on a Monday and then mow on Thursday, resume your mowing on Thursday, that would be good. So the way you could go about this is you'd mow the day before, spray Primo. So you, so you could just say you, you mow on uh, Sunday, pr spray Primo the following day on Monday. And then don't mow because you won't need to mow until Wednesday evening or Thursday, right? Because if you mow the day before, spray your, your growth regulator, which is what I typically do. I typically will mow the day before I spray my growth reg. And then I don't have to mow again. I don't mow again until what I normally would do it, which is two, three days later. So hopefully help, that helps Quincy. Next up is Anita Lockett. Anita Lockett. She says, just moved into our home and the previous owner left two gallon or two XL herbicide. Can I use this um, on my, what is two XL? I know a drive accelerator, what is two XL? Let's, uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that product is, um, Anita. Um, you said they left two gallons uh, or two, it looks like two, left a gallon of 2XL herbicide. Can I use this on my weeds? I'm not sure if it'll kill my Bermuda or centipede grass, need help. I, without knowing what the herbicide is, I, I don't wanna tell you to spray it on your lawn. Um, I mean, you know, you would think that it would be okay because they, they had it before and they, they probably used it in the past. Um, for Bermuda, um, good herbicides to use for a Bermuda and centipede lawn are like uh, Celsius, so a good example would be Celsius. So this is safe to use on Bermuda, get my face out of the way, on Bermuda and centipede lawns for broadleaf control. Certainty is also safe to use on Bermuda and centipede lawns um, for sedge control. Uh, if, um, and so this, these two, which is why I talk about this combination so much, th these two are, um, are an, it's an excellent combination for warm season turf. It's, it's a great combination that will kill the weeds, without killing your grass in the um, the, the process. Um, when it comes to centip thing is centipede is the wild is the is the the you know, the question mark because you gotta be careful with centipede grass. If um if that product has any quinclorac in it, you would not want to spray that on the centipede because that will damage, that'll injure and or kill the centipede. So um so again if you if you want you could send me a picture of take a picture of the bottle and send it to me, ron at golfcourselawn.com, and I'll, I'll let you know based on what you send me if it's a good idea to spray that on your lawn or not. But I can tell you that this combination is safe to use. This, this is a good combination for Bermuda and Centipede. It's a great, uh, great combo. People love it. They have great results with it. And you can spray it over a wide temperature range. So there is that. All right, so next up we have No Name. Guys, we are winding down. For, guys, for a change, I think it's actually going to happen. For a change, we're actually not going to go to four hours tonight. We actually might end at like three hours and some hours, some some odd minutes, right? Next up is No Name. He says, Ron, I know you're an innovator, so I have to ask what you're thinking about doing to take over, take your lawn to the next level. I'm working on some stuff, man. I can't talk about it yet. I am, I am working on some stuff in the background. Had a, had a good meeting today. Um, about some stuff that I'm working on, but I can't talk about it just yet. You know me. You know, always looking, looking to get, you know, bigger, better, Never, ever, never good enough. Never done. No, always trying to trying to get it better. So, we are. There's always going to be some um, some some new. I mean, if things work out, there'll be something something cool, a new addition here to the um, you know to the store, new offering um, that I think you guys are going to really like. But this is not not anytime soon. So, I'm not going to really talk about it. Um, yeah. But as far as taking the lawn to the next level, I mean, the, it, 
between last year to this year, I would I would I hope you guys would agree that the like the lot is better this year than it was last year, and I attribute a lot of that to the uh, to the outlet to the mower, the new the new cultivation program, like doing the you know the verticutting and turf raking, managing thatch levels, like that made has made a big difference in the appearance of the lawn. And then also I, I do like the the split feeding the split sp the spoon feeding um, program when it comes to um, growth regs, so like instead of spraying, in years past, I would do like one application, um, the monthly rate one time. So breaking it up into two applications over the course of uh, the month, you know, first and the 15th, I really like the results that I'm getting with that. And other people that are doing it are liking that too. So there's, there's always little tweaks, you know, there's always little knobs that you can turn and try and make things better. But still fundamentally, it comes down to control the weeds in your lawn, feed your lawn based on a good nutrient program, based on soil testing, and mow your grass a lot, and that's that's pretty much it. Even with any new products or any new you know, new you know, strategies that are going to come across, like that's pretty much not going to ever change. If you mow, if you do those things, keep weeds out of your lawn, you know, a good nutrient program and a lot of mowing, everything else you know builds on that as a foundation. All right, we got Gordon here. He says uh, my yard is pretty evenly distributed, of one third. One third of one kind of Bermuda may be common. One third, a very thin, skinny Bermuda. It's probably a hybrid. And then one third from dead, I guess, St. Augustine. Am I good just to spread Bermuda? I'm not sure what BA is. Bermuda, BA? I guess a Bermuda grass seed to combat erosion. I'm not sure what BA is. What does BA stand for? Uh, um, if you want to put a grass down to, to combat erosion that's just dirt, yes, you can do that. You could do like a fast, well, I mean, like an annual, annual ryegrass grows really quickly. Like that's used a lot of time for ground cover, but it's probably not gonna work well given that you that you live somewhere where Bermuda is what is thriving. So yeah, you could if you've got you can you can introduce, you can you can pick a you can pick a grass seed um, that you want, like another Bermuda grass seed, since your lawn's already kind of a blend anyway. <laughs> Kind of a hodgepodge anyway. If you want to use a little Bermuda grass seed or something else to, to, to get some some cover to prevent erosion, that would be uh, that would be fine. Uh, you could do sod. That would be also fine too. You know to help to, to help grass to start growing in that area. So there's uh, there's tons of different options. I don't know what you mean by BA. Um, so sorry about that. All right, Quincy Williams is up next. He says one more question about Primo Max. Can I still use plugs while Bermuda is under regulation? Yes, yes you can. You can still transfer plugs, you can still move plugs around. There's no problem. The only thing that really Bermuda, that Primo will change is, is that the grass doesn't grow quite as quickly. It's, it's absolutely fine. You can still use plugs while Bermuda is under regulation. And then uh, Quincy says, Ron, do you think bagging made a difference in your lawn this year? Yes, yes, it absolutely does. I mean, look at the, look at the stripe action. Here's the thing, people wanna hate on Bermuda, they say, Oh, Bermuda can't stripe. And here's the thing, I will say this in comparison to, you know, like a, a, a cool season lawn, like comparison to like, you know, to Devin's lawn, I, admit, I gotta admit, those stripes are fire. Those look really, really good, you know? However, one cannot say that Bermuda is incapable of putting down some good stripes. I mean, that's um, Bermuda at seven tenths of an inch. It's like um, 0 0.70, you know? Which is um, that's that's decent decent cutting height and the stripes are are good and the thing that helps that helps the color this year is not having clippings because what you're seeing now is just the pure color of the grass there are no dead there's no dead grass clippings there's no decaying material in there just trying to break down and um, fighting with the Bermuda to produce color so that's why the color looks as good as it does could be even better you know I'd like it to be better um, like it to be deeper green but it's not. But it, but it part a big part of why it looks um, looks the way it does, especially given that only 13 days ago it was verticut and has been through a lot, is the fact that there's not a lot of dead material in there, right? It's just just grass. Like what's in there is just living and is growing. So you're, I, I I would say that bagging did make a big difference, uh, uh, G free, and um, using growth regulator in concert with bagging makes that not. Um, Makes it makes it doable, right? Like if I were if I didn't use Primo and I tried to bag the clippings on my lawn, there's no way. I like I have like two trash cans. There's like two would not be enough for for all the clippings that would come off the lawn in a week's worth of mowing. Whereas now under regulation, I will fill up one. I'll do I'll use like one trash can to you know over the course of a week, two. So I can have like, I put like actual garbage in one. I can put grass clippings in the other one. So yeah, it works. It works works just fine for me. So. 
All right, next up is, uh, oh yeah, Gordon, he says Bermuda. Yeah, so for if it's Bermuda, yes. If you wanna put Bermuda down there, I'll bring your question back up. If you wanna put some kind of Bermuda down there to, to grow in and to have some kind of grass there and to prevent erosion, yeah, I'd be fine with that. You know, especially in your case where you already have a lawn that's a blend of different grasses, you're not someone that's gonna care if it doesn't match exactly because you already have, like it sounds like a hybrid and a common. So if you're putting something else in, not really gonna matter. So there you go. And then No Name says, how many bags do you end up with each week? I, I mean, not really bags. I empty the grass catcher. I'll put you this way. The, the, today when I mowed was the first time that I emptied the grass catcher um, more than once. Normally I'm able to mow the entire back lawn and the swale area and keep it under halfway full and empty it. Whenever it gets to halfway full, I empty it because that grass catcher in the outlet is pretty big, it's heavy. And what, ten, what can happen is if you try and mow the entire lawn with that on there and it, as it gets, gets heavier and heavier and heavier, it will actually change the height of cut. Cause you got this big, you know, basically a big anchor hanging out the front of the mower and it's gonna, it's gonna pull, it's gonna lower the height of cut. It's gonna, it's gonna, it is gonna materially change the height of cut if you allow it to full all the way up. So I don't let it get any more than halfway full. And here in the past um, week or so is when I've had to empty it. Um, so typically it's only one. So I would imagine the rest of this month and into July, two, maybe two bat two uh, empties per mow. So if you do, if I mow three times a week, you know, three, four times a week, I mean, that's um, eight, eight empties or so thereabouts. So, so, and not, not a ton. I mean, it's enough to fill up one, one of the bins, like one of those trash bins. So that, that's, that's about what it works out to. All right, cool. Well, guys, gals, Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, again, we have a brand new blog on grass seed types and how long they take to grow in the in the uh, golf course lawn store. So feel free to check that out. It's under guides, under the blog section, completely free for you to read. And hopefully you guys get some value out of that. Also, it is Father's Day. So our Father's Day is coming up soon. So if you guys want to give that special guy in your life a Father's Day gift, we are, you know, you don't know what to get it, but you want to give him something that's lawn care related, we have gift cards on the golf course long store under the, I'll show you right here, under the shop and then lawn training and gift card section. So there's the academy right here and then there's the gift cards in various denominations. So that's a way for you to get out of having to, you know, to choose like the wrong thing for, you know, for your, for your husband, boyfriend. Um, there is that. Hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. Where is the outro music? Let's cue that. It's on. Again, congrats again to Ro to um, to Robert Rainey and to um, to Robert Rainey and to Devin on winning the Stripe Action Contest for Cool Season Turf and Warm Season Turf. LG did show up. He says L <laughs> L to the L to the uh, to the OG. He makes a uh, a you know a cameo appearance here. And then LG for several like 17 months of membership. Thank you so much, LG. Appreciate all the love and support. And uh, next time you gotta enter the contest, man. Next time you gotta enter the contest. Thanks guys, gals. Have fun in the lawn this weekend. I appreciate all you guys. Take care.